Whoa. Whoopsies. <laughs> Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Hold up just a second. Uh, <laughs> I hit F1 to uh, get the stream going, but apparently F1 is also how you get to the help section on Google. Very cool. <laughs> just a second here. All right. Back to it. F11. There we go. Streamer needs help. Streamer always needs help, Jeremy. You need to understand that. Okay. Can I do... No, nah, if I'm going to do display capture, I get a... Or if I do... Uh... Yeah, if I'm going to capture what I'm trying to do here, I have to have display capture up. Let me move uh, Discord over to my other monitor. That way, if I have to pull it up for whatever reason during stream, we'll be good. Okay. You know, I, I promise I set up a little bit of this off stream, <laughs> um, but that doesn't stop me from running into technical difficulties. So, you know how it is. Uh, real quick, let's get some uh, uh, some bookkeeping out of the way. We did have two follows. Um, one like right before, sh well, both of them basically right before stream. We got one from Blue Leaf 1000 and Slinky Poo on Twitch. So, appreciated for those. At some point, like I keep saying, I will go through maybe when we uh hit like 250 or something subs on youtube i'll go through and just say everybody who subbed give like a overall thanks for all those but uh yeah it, i just don't have like an activity feed for youtube unfortunately on my screen so yeah but uh looking at stream today we're gonna be trying to read some of broken wings by Sorodobi. Uh, i mentioned past couple streams Oh, wait, we are reading, reading. Yes, we are reading fanfics today. Um, I kind of mentioned past couple streams that I wanted to take a look at them at some point, And I figured, eh, you know, I could probably read them on stream. I mean, you, you think about it. The mods are kind of like fanfics, just with very nice visuals as well on top of it. So why not uh, share a little bit of the love towards the pure writing side of the uh, the fandom? I don't know if I'm the one to do it, though. I can't read on a good day. And for some reason, I've convinced myself that doing a stream where literally all I'm doing is reading like an actual kind of like book is a good idea. But, eh, you know, it is what it is. But, uh, Chef, I made my pizza. forgot to add sauce and cheese. I will fucking find your one. That is a crime, a sin. Very correct that Dino Mo's that would never happen. I actually had a pizza before, uh, for stream as well. It's kind of, it, it's partially the reason that I'm starting later today because I needed to get something to eat and I kind of dragged my feet on getting dinner. So threw together a quick Totino's and chowed down on that. So we are good now. We are good now. Base streamer reading fan fiction. I don't know if it's, if I'm based just yet, but you know, I, I, I like that. I like those words together. Those make me happy. No way, it's after E2. Yeah, I think this is like kind of one of those E2 cope fix uh, that people have referred to. Um, the way that I chose tonight's fanfic, by the way, is I just went to AO3 filtered by the amount of kudos and took a look at some of the top ones um, and figured we would start with uh, at least one of those. And when it came to where or which one I chose, if I'm honest... <laughs> I chose the one that wasn't over a hundred thousand words because for the first fan, keep in mind, we are very likely not finishing this tonight. We'll probably get like a decent way into it. And if we're feeling it, we'll follow up with a part two on it. But right now, this is the first time I've done like this kind of, I guess, quote unquote content where we're just reading from AO3. So... We're going to be feeling things out as we go here, trying to see what works, what doesn't work. Um, probably, probably will open up. If if we decide that we want to have this be a reoccurring thing on stream, we'll probably open it up to recommendations from chat and figure out maybe showing some love to ones that aren't as seen just yet. If somebody finds like a really good one, we could take a look at those. But, yeah, um, in terms of how the stream's going to play out, ugh, for some reason I got, like, something in my, in my, in my, in my chest right now. Gotta, like, get a burp or something. But, uh, the way that I'm thinking we're going to play stream out here is that 
I'm going to be looking at chat. I'll be reading chat, but I don't know if I'll necessarily be responding to chat mid chapters. I think how we want to try and do it, because if we look at it like this, this is the length of like chapter one, for example, right? And we've got 19 chapters. I think how I want to try and do it is that we will begin reading the chapter, read it all the way to the end, and then we can have like a slight discussion or uh, doesn't have to be necessarily slight, but like some kind of discussion. I'll be reading chat again once we finish the chapter. That way we don't interrupt the flow of anything. That way we can try and, you know, get through this with some relative, um, I guess speed, but that's not quite the word I'm looking for. So just temper your expectations in that respect. If, if that doesn't feel like it's working, we'll change it up. But that's how I want to kind of try and pitch this right now. So should have made you a PNG tuber for this. Ah, Jeremy, you see my friend, I do not come alone. For I have brought Fang. <laughs> that's right, fellas. We've got the desktop Fang waiting for us. And they will keep us company as we read. <laughs> so that'll just be sticking at the bottom left of the screen. Just something a little bit visual for you guys. Because, I mean, if we're just staring at this the whole time, it's it's going to... I feel like some people's eyes are going to glaze over. So you can, look at the, you can look at the cute little fang down here. And just mess around with it occasionally. Say, so look, playing a guitar. Just tuck it over to the side so that they're not covering the text at all. And yeah. Hey, the desktop thing. If you don't know, I like drama. What the glitch said, boop it. Here, we'll give it a quick boop. Yep, see, boop. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. It's great. It's nice to just have on screen. So. <sighs> probably go for... I don't figure much longer than four hours um we'll have to see how my throat's feeling i mean i was able to do all of uh snoot game and wani without shredding my vocals but uh well there's eighty thousand words here we're gonna be talking for a while so we've uh been burning time for about 10 minutes here anybody who is going to try to get in should be in at this point so let's go ahead and get this thing started um from what I understand, this fic is written from the point of view of Fang post E2, and we'll start off with the summary here. So again, this is Broken Wings by Sora Dobi. Let's go ahead and get into it. Just 80k? Look. <laughs> Look. The other ones were way fucking longer. <laughs> Alright. Summary. Four years after the disastrous breakup that destroyed her life, Fang still struggles to find hope in a sea of shattered dreams. All she wants is a new life, but it always seems to be just out of reach. With so little going right ever since, she stands on the edge, wondering if she will fall. Sometimes, it takes someone in the dark with you to find your path home. And then a quick note here, just a disclaimer, stating that this is fanfiction based off Snoot Game, which is created by Cavemanon, which in turn is a parody. So just a little bit of bookkeeping there necessary. And we have chapter one here. Desolate. <clears throat> I take a long drag of my cigarette, hacking and coughing at the poor quality brand I can scarcely afford. My pale blue eyelids shut as my lungs try to wrench out of my body, slowly opening back up and revealing amber eyes that have seen too much pain for such a short lifetime. Fucking cheap ass smokes. What else can I fucking hope for on a shit job that just... that barely makes enough to cover this goddamn crap apartment? I tap the ash off the tip before turning around, observing the crap hole I call home. Pizza time boxes are strewn across every visible surface, dishes stacked up in the sink or shattered to pieces in piles near the wall. I wasn't proud of it, but whenever I lost my shit or a terrible memory came back to haunt me, the dishes fell victim to my rage. Several dents mark the walls, imprints of my fist almost making a mural of misery, with faint stains of long-since dried blood in the cracks. There's a hardly recognizable brown couch covered in claw marks, with stuffing poking out of the holes, and what can only generously be called a blanket and a flat pillow on top. 
The carpet, if you can call it one, is stained with alcohol, with bottles strewn across the floor. Cheap booze being the only vi other vice I can afford. The kitchen is a mess, with utensils and pizza crusts spread across the counters. The only thing not in ruin is my microwave, the one appliance I care to keep clean so I can have my dino nuggies, last food that can calm me down and dull the ache in my chest. I sigh with frustration as I draw the last bit of the cigarette's life into my lungs before holding the butt in my fingers. With a scowl on my face, I drive the button to my bicep, wincing as the searing pain of fire on flesh burns another wound into my arms. It hurts. A lot. But to be honest, I sometimes need to feel something other than apathy. Something more than the near perpetual state of misery I find myself in, day in and day out. Playing shitty gigs at pizza time to an audience of nearly no one. And the few who do show up rarely ever look at us, let alone care. But it pays the bills. Keeps me alive. And that's all I can hope for these days. As the now cool cigarette butt falls from my fingers and adds itself to the ever-growing pile on my floor, I think back to that day on the beach, a day where everything I had ever hoped for died, and my dreams fell apart as cold reality smashed into me like a ton of bricks. The person I thought loved me more than anything tore into me, insulting my being and crushing my spirit, leaving me in ruin. I had no one to turn to. I had backed him up against my friends and broke off with them. My family? I can barely talk to them these days. Not since I left home one day with hardly a goodbye, as I stood in the doorway confused and scared, my mother breaking apart and my father shouting at me to come back. My brother just stood there, unable to speak, him being the only one I talked to about that night. God, that night. Why did it have to go so wrong? I slammed open the door to my house, tears streaking down my cheeks. Orange eyeliner slicking into a horrendous mess smeared across my face from my vain attempts at stopping the flow as I had stomped my way home. Lucy, what's wrong? My petite mother called out to me as she stood from her seat. I looked over at her, my lips trembling and my eyes full of tears before shouting. I don't want to talk about it, Mom. Just leave me alone. I felt bad yelling at her, but everything inside hurt far worse than that. She said nothing as she covered her mouth with her hand, before slowly seating herself back down as I started up the stairs. Don't you yell at your mother like that. Show some respect. My titanic beast of a father growled as he pointed at me in anger. I flicked my eyes towards him, now full of fury capable of burning through his soul as I glared at him. Shut the hell up, Dad! I screeched as I stomped a boot up into the stairs. I don't fucking have time for this. You can fucking yell at me later about how shit a daughter I am to you, but right now all I want to be is alone. I punctuated the last word with a solid punch to the wall, blood trickling down the side of my palm. He said nothing, only staring back at me in disbelief, disappointment in his eyes as he looked away. I said nothing else as I spun back around and continued up the stairs, pushing open my door before slamming it shut. All of my anger and hate drying up as I staggered across the room to my bed, before collapsing onto the sheets. Gripping my pillow tightly in my injured palm, I bawled my eyes out, the words Anon said coming back in full force as I'm pulled into the memory. You're a girl with daddy issues, and you use those fucking pronouns just to get attention. He staggers in place, alcohol having fully taken control. How could you say that? This is who I am. My fist clenched tight as I stare in disbelief. How can he talk to me like this? I thought he loved me. I'm fucking surprised I was able to put up with this shit for as long as I did, he belches, the thick scent of alcohol filling the air. All the time trying not to offend you by dropping a she on accent or fucking whatever. You're definitely fucking mentally ill or some shit. His words pour out in a slurred mess as he stumbles around, pointing at me. I'm not mentally ill. I'm fucking non-binary. I thought you accepted that about me. Was everything we had a fucking lie this whole time? While you tried to fix me for Naomi? What even was I to you? I glare at him with all my hatred. But even now, my heart is breaking. Oh, please don't let this be real. You're everything I have left. Are you supposed to be a boy or a girl or what? Do you even fucking know what you are? Or are you just a fucking schizo? 
points directly at my chest as he says those last words. My mind is sent spinning. Everything I thought we had together shattered in an instant of, instant of, drunk, in an instant of drunken rage. I shove him as hard as I can, sending him spiraling out into the water. He barely even tries to get up as I walk away before I turn back one last time. Hanon, Trish was right about you. With that, I cover myself with my wings and run back home. Fresh tears streamed down my face as I sobbed into my pillow, tearing small holes into it with my claws as I broke down. Everything hurt so much, and I couldn't stop the pain. My wings were shaking uncontrollably, a few feathers falling loose and drifting to the floor. My heart was in pieces, my life and my dreams in ruin. What did I even have left? No friends, I just screamed at my parents, and the one person I loved just shit all over my entire being. What the fuck am I gonna do now? What's even left? I asked no one. I was alone. So very alone. As I continue to sob, curling up into a ball as my body shakes with every rack and cry, I heard a knock at my door. What do you want? Can't you hear me in here? Why would you want to talk to me right now? I shouted toward the door, glaring at whichever one of my family decided that it was a good idea. But my words did not deter them, and the door slowly opened, revealing Nazar. He was still in his prom outfit, his wings poking out the back as he turned his orange eyes to mine, a crown lazily hanging off his orange crest, which he took off as he entered the room, setting it on my dresser. What do you want, Nazar? Come to fuck something else up for me? I scowled at him through my tears, teeth feeling like they would crack from the pressure of gritting them so hard. He shook his head calmly before approaching me, sitting beside me on the bed, just staring into my eyes. I wanted to be angry at him, but as he looked at me wordlessly, every wall I had built fell apart as I embraced him, sobbing into his shoulder. He gently put his arms around me, just under my wings, saying nothing, but just letting me cry, swaying me softly side to side. For a few moments, that's all we did. I cried my heart out, and he held me, never once trying to get a word out, only being there for me. Eventually, I am able to stop, sniffing as I pull back from him. I'm sorry, Nasser. Everything's fucked. I broke up with Anon. He... He... Oh, God, Nasser, he fucking destroyed me. The things he said, all of it fucking cruel. I thought he loved me. A fresh wave of tears started to push from, my, from me as I rubbed my eyes. I felt Nasser's hand on my, uh, touch my shoulder. Tell me everything, Fang. I fucked up a lot, but right now, I'm here for you and no one else. He gazed into my eyes with palpable sympathy, waiting for me to speak. Taking a deep breath, I told him everything that happened on the beach. The drinking and the fireworks that were fun at first. When Anon got drunk enough, he told me everything he was thinking. I left not a single word out, and with every sentence, I saw Nazar's face contort into anger before quietly shifting back to sympathy. I could tell he was pissed, but at that moment, it didn't seem to matter. He was here for me and me alone. I'm sorry, Fang. You don't deserve to be talked to like that, especially by someone you cared, uh, you cared about so much. He pulled me into a tight hug as I put my arms around his, his back. I don't know what to do anymore, Nazar. It was supposed to be me and him against the world, with us doing whatever, and now, now I'm alone. All my friends hate me, I fucking cut them off from me thinking Anon was all I needed, but look how that fucking turned out. Pulled out of the hug while my wings flared up behind me, bristling at the edges. I have no friends, our parents probably fucking hate me, and I have nothing to look forward to. My music plans? Fucking dead. My band? It's fucking over. My love? Gone! I slapped my hands down on my legs before my arms went limp. Everything's in ruins. Nazar sighed and shook his head. Our parents don't hate you, Fang. I don't either. You 
just had possibly the shittiest breakup nearly anyone ever has. I'll explain it to them. You take some time to yourself. You need it. I nodded slowly while crossing my arms across my chest. Thank you, Nasser. But... For now, please. I just want to be alone. Please. He nodded solemnly. Alright, Fang. I'll talk to you later. He patted me on the shoulder before getting up and walking away, gently shutting the door. And after he left, I curled back up into a ball, sobbing quietly to myself. I didn't know what to do with my life. What exactly did I have left to push for? All my dreams had been broken in one night on a beach in anger, and the pieces were slipping through my fingers. I'd have to start over completely. There's nothing left for me in the life I had dreamt of. All that remained was a gaping hole where my heart used to be. As the hours sped by, I made up my mind. I would finish high school, but after that, I'd be on my own. I'd make a new life for myself. After that night, I'd settled on a plan, moving out and being on my own. Not giving a single fuck about anything, and just living. Only a few weeks after graduation that I packed a suitcase with my clothes, my guitar in hand, and my bass on my shoulder. I stood in front of my parents and said that I was leaving while offering no explanation. My mom had pleaded me to stay more, but even as she tugged on my arm, all I did was look her in the look at her with empty eyes. I think that hurt her the most. I must have looked deader. Inside, I certainly was. She let me go, and my dad kept asking questions and yelling while I ignored him completely. Nazar looked at me, knowingly, but still with sadness in his eyes. I glanced at him with a mournful frown. I didn't want to hurt any of them, but I couldn't stay. I needed a new start. I scoff as I kick a pizza box across the room. Fat lot of good that new start did me. In the end, I'm living in this shit apartment with barely enough money to keep me fed, and every weeknight the same thing. I go down to pizza time, and play all night to a crowd that doesn't care, and then come home, punch my wall, and go to sleep. My weekends aren't any better, mostly just me trying to feel less like shit through whatever drink I scored that week. Sighing as I rub my temples, trying to ease the headache the memories bring. I pick up a half-empty beer off my dingy coffee table and drink the rest down in one swig before smashing it in the trash can and slumping off to my bathroom. Clicking on the dim light, I examine myself in the mirror. I am a mess. My wings are tattered remnants of their once former beauty, half full of the feathers they should be if I could just stop plucking them off when I'm bored. My pale blue body is gaunt and ragged. My poor diet has done a number on me. My once long hair is shaved down to the scalp, stubble the only reminder of the flowing silver strands that once graced my shoulders. There are permanent bags under my eyes, with my dark, heavy eyeshadow dimming irises, normally a brilliant amber color. Tattoos cover my arms and the top of both my hands and shoulders, accompanied by cigarette burns. At the end of my beak, my lips are covered in black lipstick. A necklace hangs from my neck, multicolored gems with one purple one in the center. My clothes are a ragged black tank top and loose jeans that I wash maybe once every couple of days when I have a few quarters to spare. All in all, pitiful sight. I grimace as I take in the sight of myself. I could care about my health, but why the fuck would I? Not like there's anything out there worth my time. My band is the only thing I take seriously, and the reasons at least for that being that I don't want to be homeless in Skin Row. That is basically a death sentence out here. If you are on the streets for more than a week, they'll find you with a knife in your back and your clothes on, if you're lucky. It's been four long years since shit fell apart, and not a fucking thing has fallen back into place. I'm surviving, and that was it. The only person from my past who kept in contact with me was my brother. My parents call, sure, but that's mostly to make sure I'm not dead. I give them that little, at least, to answer and let them know that yeah, I'm still breathing today if only just. But Nazar, he calls every week to check up on me, 
to ask how my life is going and if any prospects are panning out. Not that there, not that any ever are, but he is one of the few people I enjoy talking to. Funny that we have a better relationship now than we had at the end of school. Not that I ever see him since he's in college. I never go home. But it's better than being completely alone. Alone. The bridge stuck in my brain. Every now and then, I'd wonder what hole Anon fell into. As much as I want to completely forget him, I don't think I ever can. It never made any sense what happened that night. What the fuck caused him to say all that shit? Nothing we had done showed any of that before. Still, he was a prick for saying all that shit to me. The thought of him causes bile to rise up in my throat. But even then, there's a glimmer in my heart of what we had been together. It was the only time I had really been happy. To have it all pointlessly destroyed in one night was more than I could take. Fuck him. I say with spite as I shove myself back from the counter. Never once came back to apologize. Never once tried to make things right. Just disappeared afterward and dropped out of school. Who knows where he fucking is now? If he's even alive, not that I fucking care. I turn away but stop in my tracks. Looking down at the floor, I see a flutter in my ch I feel a flutter in my chest. How can there even be a piece of me that still gives a shit? Though, I suppose I still feel bad about the concert to this day. He got knocked the hell out, and I didn't even lift a finger till after the show to drag him out of there. Maybe we are both pieces of shit, but that doesn't excuse what he said to me. Growling, I stroll back into the living room and stare at the guitar case that had been gathering dust in the corner. I haven't picked it up since I moved but I couldn't find it in myself to leave it behind. I stare at it as the thoughts of us in my bedroom drift into mind, him listening to my song and telling me it was beautiful, teaching him how to play, and how he'd stood up for me to play my guitar in my band. Now it's just a sour memory of time lost, back when I believed he fucking cared. I give it one last look before reaching for my bass and slinging it over my shoulder. Taking a seat on my ragged couch while plugging in a small amp, I check the tuning before playing. Probably pisses off my neighbors to no end, but not that I care. Landlord doesn't give two shits about noise complaints and rarely bothers to <clears throat> even fix anything that breaks, so there's no chance my ass is gonna get kicked out for jamming out in my room. I strum the strings with a pick, heavy notes shaking my body as I push the stress out into song. My voice is tired and hoarse but still has a glimmer of beauty to it as I play to an audience of myself. Another weekend ending, nothing new for me, and tomorrow I'd be playing yet again for a place that scarcely has a couple dozen customers to its name. Didn't matter, though. It's a paycheck is a paycheck, and I have bills to pay. I play for a little over an hour before setting my bass back in its case. Cracking my neck and stretching my tattered wings, I kick off my boots and pull the ratty blanket over my body. I don't have much hope for my life beyond this, day after day, until the day I die, but I can't help but hope anyway, for something to change, anything to get better, and my life to not just be one apathetic day after another. Who knows, maybe life still has something left in it for me, whatever the fuck it might be. Turning my head to the side, I close my eyes and drift off to sleep. Another day done, a million more to go. End chapter one. All right, Let me take a quick peek at chat over here. Hey Josh, hope you're doing good. So are we gonna kill Anon later? Makes me wonder what makes the difference between E1 Anon and E2. One tries so hard despite the inevitable, while the other was seemingly heartless. Was drunk and didn't grow versus him and Fang not growing. Honestly, ending two hurts me more than one because how real it is that they both are alive and miserable by themselves when one more conversation would at least let them live decent lives. True, though. 
Yeah, I guess E1 Anon didn't even have the chance to be uh, bitter or nass. Things just sprouted from bad to worse so quickly. E4 Fang just chilling. And that's not paying back for the lunch card he used. Yeah, he dipped. He said, nah. <laughs> Everything sucks. I'm out of here. Oh, wait. Does the diamonds last longer than Anon? Oh, shit. Snoop fanfic. Didn't expect this waking up. Yeah, we're trying something a little new today. Ugh. Adjust myself in my chair real quick. But yeah, I think the I think the difference in E1 versus E2 isn't necessarily uh, just Anon. I mean, I think Anon doesn't grow really in either necessarily, but in E1 versus E2, it's the situation surrounding Fang that really leads to the outcomes, right? Where like Fang doesn't get like any support and that just spirals in E1, whereas in E2, Fang has at least some confidence now, and yeah. At least I think, I'd, I'd have to take a look at how you get the, I'm pretty sure it's like both of them have to be two or less on their score, if and I'd be remembering correctly. Good to be back home, I was in Louisiana for a week, and it sucks. <laughs> and it's nice to return home after like a trip, just kick back. Oh, <sighs> all right. How long did that take? It took about 20 minutes, 23 minutes. Not too bad. I'd say we could probably get through. Let's see. If we're going to say about three would be an hour. I'd say we could probably get through about 10 chapters tonight, maybe halfway through this, as long as the chapters aren't extremely like there's I mean, there's probably going to be like a chapter or two that's extremely long, but we could try to shoot for about 10 chapters, get it about halfway ish. All right. Ugh. Let's go ahead and get on with the second chapter here, then. Oh, man, my fucking hair is in the way. Leaning up against my chair and it's just pinching it. Sweep it out. We're good. All right, here we go. Chapter two. Facing the crowd. All right. Here we go. Probably gonna move this over here because otherwise when I scroll I'm gonna shrink thing facing the crowd I groan as the light of the morning sun invades my apartment through the window the blinds are fucking useless bent with gaps all over so at best they block a couple rays of sun I pull myself up a little rubbing the sleep from my eyes my back hurts like hell from sleeping on this worn couch I'm fairly certain there's a spring in there that's trying to impale me every night I check my phone Nearly time to get down to the pizza place. It takes a few hours to get ready every night, and I can't leave the other two hanging. I find the strength to pull myself up, myself up off the couch, scratching my side while walking over and popping open the fridge. <sighs> Looks like it's pizza for lunch. Again. Like every other fucking day. I don't even bother heating it up before chomping it down in seconds, gulping down my pitiable meal. Making my way over to the bathroom, I strip out of my clothes and step into the shower. The water is lukewarm at least, which is all I can ever expect to get out of this thing. It rattles the whole time, so relaxation is out of the question. But I can't go in smelling like booze and depression if I want to keep my job. I get in enough trouble when I get pissed at anyone in the audience who heckles me. I'm trying to figure out who's saying this. No talent fuckers think they could judge me. Pricks probably couldn't even carry a tune in a bucket. Smug smile grows on my lips. I may not be famous, but I fucking know I can play music well. After finishing up my shower and drying off, I almost grabbed the brush off the counter. For a moment, I thought I still had my hair before, but then I run my hand across my scalp. I haven't grown my hair out since I shaved it off a year after I left home. Every time I look at myself in the mirror, all I saw was someone else I wasn't anymore. I sad to think that one of the things Anon had shit on me for was something I let go a couple of years back. I thought I was non-binary. <laughs> seemed so right for me when Trish brought it up. But the more I focused on it and learned who I was, without anyone pressuring me, the more I realized that it wasn't really me. 
I've been so eager to accept something new to make a new me feel less depressed that I latched onto the idea without understanding it at all. Just another piece of me I left behind. Though, a part that I guess never was really me at all. I'm still Fang, though, through and through. Just a fuck ton more miserable. I still can't believe Trish tried to get me to wear a leotard. Roll my eyes at the thought. I touched the stubble on my head a bit longer before sighing. And as I looked for my eyeshadow, I catch sight of my old orange and purple makeup. I had brought it with me when I left, but I stopped wearing it ages ago. All I wear now is my black eyeshadow and lipstick. The only colorful thing on me is my necklace and my own blue scales. I slip on a fresh set of clothes, same as I was wearing before. Not that I have much of a wardrobe these days. I stare into the eyes in the mirror, watching a single tear streak down my cheek. I had such high hopes before. Now it just felt empty. What's even the point? Why do we keep on pushing on when I have so little to live for? Closing my eyes, I crush the thoughts out of my head. I would be devastated if I killed myself. My parents, even if I am barely on speaking terms with them, don't deserve to have to bury their daughter. On a smaller note, I'd also be fucking over my bandmates. They need what little we make every day to survive, same as me. So I can't leave them alone. Just keep doing what you're doing, Fang. Look myself dead in the eyes as I straighten up. Someday, something might change. You don't know. It can't just be one miserable day after another. Something will change. It has to. Nodding to myself after my tiny pep talk. Put on my boots and grab my base. Can't waste any more time moping and feeling sorry for myself. Got work to do. Streets of Skin Row are even more of a disaster these days than they had been four years ago when I had been here with Anon. Trash litters the streets. And there's at least one new chalk outline in the alleyways each day. Homeless dinos and humans alike lie on the side while holding their hands out to anyone who has spare change. I'm not one of them. Every cent I have goes to rent, cigarettes, booze, and food. Specifically in that order. Probably should have food further up, but I get enough cardboard pizza for free for working. It keeps me alive, if only just. Lighting up a cheap cigarette, I take a deep draw, stifling any coughs, trying to push their way out. I blow out smoke as I look out, to the, look out at the streets, covered in potholes and puddles. What few cars even drive this far down are pieces of junk, held together with duct tape and prayers. One drives past me with its muffler dragging across the pavement, leaving sparks in its wake. I've lived here long enough that the locals don't bother me anymore. They know how poor I am and that as scrawny as I look, I can still fucking end any bastard that tries to steal my base. Laws are still pristine and sharp. I have to take care of my ten personal defense weapons in this part of town. Finishing off my cigarette with one last breath. I flick it into the street, not bothering to stamp it out. As I turn the corner, the grungy pizza time sign comes into view. My tiny shitty oasis in the sea of refuse and broken dreams. The walls in the alley are covered in graffiti. The employee entrance door, the only thing spared the local artist attention. The sign in front of the store has lost a couple of letters and on the windows hangs a now hiring sign for all the good it does. Ever since I showed up, I don't think I've seen another new employee. I guess this city ran out of fuck-ups looking for a last chance to survive on minimum wage. I make a little more than that, for being a performer, I guess, though it's nothing to write home about. It's enough to keep me in my vices, so it's all I need. I push open the, slot, the side door and the smell of cheap, greasy pizza greets me. Not that they can afford quality ingredients in Skin Row, but it's practically a miracle that they're actually serving real meat instead of whatever they can scrape off the sidewalk after a hot day. <laughs> as pitiful as it is, this is the one place I can smile, here in the back. Getting staff are always kind to me, greeting me like it's the best day in the world. It keeps me going. At least to these people, I'm someone more than a fading dead musician. One in particular is always the kindest. The owner, the man who had given a rundown pterodactyl a job when I'd run out of hope. 
<clears throat> hey, hey, Fang. Good to see you. How are you doing this evening? Dave smiles up from his oven, feeding another pizza into it, where it slowly slides across the conveyor track under the heat. He can't afford a brick oven down here, nor the cost to operate one, but no one complains about freshly heated up pizza. Dave is a large baryonyx, his snout dwarfing my own with rows of sharp teeth. He has his bright orange scales speckled with brown and red, and a long, stiff tail. His eyes are an intense crimson, but if you know him, they don't scare you. He has a heart of gold. He just has to act tough outside, so he won't be taken advantage of by the fuckers that live here. He always wears casual clothes, with a thick white apron, but with all sorts of utensils for carving up pizzas and ingredients. Hey Dave, I'm doing alright. Just another day in the office, you know? I wave and smile at him. I'll never let him know how close I am to the edge every day. He'd break his heart. He laughs heartily at my poor attempt at a joke, giving me a slap on the shoulder. Glad to hear it, Fang. The rest of the band's waiting for you in the back room. I'll have some fresh pizzas in there for you guys in just a little bit. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it, as always. He gives me a quick nod, and I head down the hall to the sounds of the drummer testing out his kit, accompanied by the soft strumming of someone tuning a guitar. I push open the door, and take in the sight of my home away from home. Lightly furnished break room, where we spend time between sets every night. There's a microwave, and a stack of paper plates, with a few grease stains scattered on the counter. I have taken to scrawling lyrics and notes in my corner with chalk, and with plenty of dust lingering around from erasing my mistakes. It's a hell of a lot cleaner than my apartment, mostly because someone else does all the cleaning for me. In the corner messing with his drums and getting into the mood is Jacob, a tall and skinny gallimimus. His arms are the only buff thing on him from all the practice he put in every day. I thought their speed was only on their feet, but with how swiftly he can hammer out a beat, it's crystal clear it all went into the arms as well. His scales are dark green with bright stripes of red across his neck and snout, with a brilliant light blue eyes and a tuft of dyed teal hair covering his head. Skin Row can't keep him down. He's going places. As soon as he decides to finally leave this place, that is. Too much of a homebody to try and escape anywhere yet. Off to the side, twisting the pegs on his guitar is Benjamin. Though he always goes by Benji. He's a little taller than me but shorter than Jacob with a lean build. He runs to work every day as he lives on the edge of Skin Row, and I'm still not fucking sure why he chooses to come here. He never drives his car because he wants to keep his tires. I can't blame him, though it's not like anyone would steal the junker. He's an impressive Utah Raptor, with fe uh, feathers running along the length of his head and back all the way down to his fluffy tail. A short layer of feathers also runs along the underside of his arms. His feathers are beautiful shades of gold that complement his dark yellow scales, with his snout being a lighter hue of yellow and his eyes piercing green. He's the most artsy of the three of us, always dreaming up crazy ideas on how we're going to go big someday. I never will have the heart to break his dreams, but I really have not been planning on doing, going anywhere anytime soon. Setting down my bass with an audible thud, I take the seat I take a seat down on the couch, crossing my legs as I call out to the boys. Hey guys, sorry I'm a little late. I had some trouble waking up. Benji flashes a toothy grin and shakes his head. No problem, Fang. We were just practicing anyway. Never know when we'll get discovered and get out of skin row before we get shanked. I sigh, snapping open my case and pulling my bass up into my lap, plugging in a small amp. I wish I had your optimism, Benji. I really do. But I'll be honest, I'm okay with just surviving for now. I pluck a few strings, making sure it didn't detune while bouncing around on my walk here. The deep tones rumble across the room, finally startling Jacob out of his focus. He looks around for a bit before his eyes fall on me and he smiles. Oh, uh, hey Fang. Didn't hear you come in. How's it going? <laughs> okay, who's this one? Yeah, this Fang. You wouldn't notice an earthquake busting the building around you while you're in the zone, Jacob. It's okay. Another day in paradise. Not that I show any signs I'm happy. It's me. This is just one more day and another paycheck. He nods before putting down his drumsticks. 
you're right. <laughs> place could blow up and I wouldn't notice. Wait, hold up. Am I getting the right person here? Yeah, fuck it. We'll just keep reading. I wouldn't notice. Anyway, since you're here now, want to get some practice in before we go on stage in a bit? I shrug. I don't see why fucking not. Nothing else to do before showtime anyway. With that, Jacob picks up his sticks and spins back on his drums, with Benji not far behind, standing up with his guitar in hand. I scoop forward on my seat and start us off, with the other two joining in after they figure out what I'm playing. I'll admit I like these two dweebs. I still remember the day I met them down here. The three of us looking for a job, like fate brought us together to form a new band. It sucks for them to be... It's, it sucks for them that the one person they had to run into was me. I wonder where they would be now if we hadn't stuck together these past four years. Probably not still playing in a pizzeria day after day. God, I hope I haven't ruined their fucking lives. I hum along to the beat, sparing my voice for when the show starts later. I can barely get through a full set as it is with how hoarse my vocal cords have become after years of heavy smoking. Not that I have any intention of stopping, nicotine being one of the few things getting me through the day. Benji is happy shredding away at his guitar. He is equally good at bass and even offered to let me frontline with the guitar, but I pushed it aside. I still don't know how to touch my guitar. <laughs> I mean, not ever. Jacob's once again lost in his own world, yet keeping perfect pace with the both of us. He doesn't belong here. I hope he gets out soon. I hope they both do. No one deserves to be stuck at a dead end with me, holding it all down with my apathy. I can't help it. It's a struggle to even wake up in the morning these days. As the minutes fly by, it grows close to showtime. Well, what passes for showtime in the middle of a pizzeria in the dumps of Skin Row? We gather up our instruments and amps and finish setting up the stage. The dimly lit restaurant has scant few patrons, filling out a few booths and seats as I scan the crowd never expect many people to show up. T to be honest, I'm happy with the handful that regularly pass through. Poor dreg dregs of the society long having given up on their dreams. Just like me. The same human has come in every day since I've been working here. Eating a burger, which for some reason Dave always makes for him. They're old friends, I guess. Always a new teenage couple in one of the booths making out. Like it was some thrill to get your rocks off at the dingiest corner of town. I can only wonder how many of them never make it home with their wallets. Oddly enough, there is a new face in the crowd, if you can call it a face. He's in the back corner, farthest from the stage, a black beanie and black sweatshirt, on with a pair of ragged navy jeans. Something about him seems familiar, but I can't put my finger on it. Not that it matters. He'll come and go, same as all the newcomers did, lasting a week at best before hauling ass out of here. I feel like he's stirring it straight into my soul. It makes me a little uncomfortable, I'll be honest. But nothing else is going on in here. I suppose eyes will be drawn to the only things moving. I plug my bass into a larger amp before stepping up to the microphone, a dim spotlight illuminating us as we begin our show. I introduce the band before preparing myself for another night. Most of my songs these days are a mix of depressing and sometimes soul-crushing, but I always stick a few more moderate songs in. I don't want to drive anyone to fucking suicide listening to me no more than I do myself writing each one. Jacob's providing a pleasant beat to my song, while Benji keeps pace with my soft but deep notes. My voice cracks across the tiny speakers, dotting the stage, the cheap microphone doing its best not to deafen anyone with feedback. My eyes are locked, my eyes are closed as I finish the first song before I slowly open them to see the reaction of the crowd. Neutral, as I always expect. Same as any other night. Except for the newcomer. Seems like he has seen a ghost as he leans forward in his seat getting a better look at us. Or more so me. He has a dumbstruck look on his face with whatever's going through his mind. Not that I really care. You can gawk all you like, wherever you are. You'll forget me by the end of the week. The set goes on, song by song, as the hours dwindle into twilight. Nearly all the patrons have long since checked out. A few pay attention up to the last song, until only one person in the crowd is still even looking at us. That one skinny who seemed to be on his edge, the edge of his seat this whole time. As indifferent as I am to life at this point, 
still feels good to see someone really seeming to enjoy everything we played. Far different from the normal lazy gazes we got from the desperate folks struggling to afford a meal day to day. I sighed before stepping back up to the mic to close the night. Thank you all for listening. We've been strands of silver. We got merch up front if you want any. Good night, Skin Row. With that, I step back away from the mic, turning to unplug my bass and pick up the amp. I look out one last time into the crowd, and whoever it is, he's still there. Though it looks like he's fighting an internal battle and losing as his head is clasped in his hands. I shrug. Whatever problem he's having isn't any of mine. I've got to get back home before it gets too dark to see, with how half the damn streetlights are out. As we gather up our stuff and head to the back, Jacob speaks up. You know, our band name made a lot more sense a couple years ago. I scowl as I sling my base case around my shoulder. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I just... I don't want to grow my hair out right now. Every time I looked at myself in the mirror... Just snow for right now, Jacob. I ran my hand across my scalp, the stubble a faint reminder of what once was. He puts a hand on my shoulder. Sorry, Fang. I didn't know it was a sour subject. It's alright. The name is still pretty fucking cool. I sigh as I give him his hand a gentle squeeze. <laughs> it's alright, Jacob. Someday maybe I'll grow it back out. For now, though, it's stubble fang all the way. Fine by me. <laughs> I need to get going, though. Thank Raptor Jesus, Dave, let me keep the drums here. Be a bitch to haul them back every day. Lucky you. Benji says with a grunt as he steps in front of us. I gotta go make my run while hauling a guitar case around. Tightens down the strap so it presses against his body, keeping it from slapping the shit out of him on his run. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care. See you, Benji. Jacob and I say in unison as the raptor pushes open the side door and sprints out of view. I guess I'll catch you later too, Fang. I'll see you later. I wave and he too heads out the door. Out of sight. It's not long before it's just me and Dave left inside. It is a little after eight, and the pizzeria doesn't stay open in the night as there's nothing but robbers and ruffians after the stro after that strolling the streets. Last customer to leave is my rapt audience of one. He glances back at me for a moment before walking out the door. His face a whirl of emotions as his eyes drift over to me one last time. I don't know who he is. I don't know if I'll ever see him here again. Not that it matters. Still, it was nice to have someone seem to enjoy my ship for once. I'm leaning on the wall outside the employee entrance, enjoying a smoke when Dave finally comes out, locking the five locks behind him. Not much to steal in there, but people are desperate in skin row. Anything has value to a pawn shop. I take a deep inhale, burning up a quarter of it as Dave turns to me and hands me a couple boxes of pizza. Don't go smoking those too hard, Fang. I hate to ruin your beautiful voice with that stuff. He puts on his jacket, stuffing his keys in his pocket as I roll my eyes at him with a smile. Eh, Dave, don't go trying to be my dad. I'll be fine. I know how much I can handle, and the ears haven't destroyed my voice yet. I tap the ash off the end as he sighs, putting his hands in his pocket. Ah, sorry, Fang. I can't help it. My worries all. You always look so tired these days. Is there anything I can do to help you out? I shake my head, flicking my cigarette in the alleyway. I'm sorry, but no, Dave. There isn't really anything you can do except keep paying me so I have something to eat every day and a roof over my head. I'll deal with my problems. Don't worry about me, okay? I slide over, giving him a quick hug before picking my base up off from where it was leaning against the wall. I gotta get home. You know where these you know these streets aren't safer after nine. He nods before walking beside me as we reach the parking lot. I'll worry about you anyway, Fang. See you tomorrow. He waves to me, giving me a limp wave, me giving a limp wave in return before starting my walk toward home. Home. Not that it, even, not that it is even much at all. More so a prison of my own making that I go back to every day. Adding another scratch to the wall. Wasting my days away in a swirl of smoke and booze. The streets are dead quiet, everyone already having fled indoors, 
Homeless gathering groups for protection. No one bothers me as usual. Too afraid to find out how dangerous I can be when backed into a corner. I punt a can into the street as I round the corner and head up the stairs into my building. The hallways reek of beer and spoiled food. Pretty sure half of these apartments are abandoned, and maybe even a couple have dead junkies in them. Not a soul in the world caring enough to check. I push open my door with my boot before closing it and locking the three deadbolts. Home. Terribly depressing home. But it's mine. One of the few things in the world that belonged wholly to me. I put the pizza boxes Dave gave me into the fridge, pulling out any of the ones with old slices that have turned to stone and tossing them in the garbage. My fridge is a shitty sight to behold. Knock all of old types in a sea of pizza boxes. The only difference being the single bag of nuggies I splurge on every month to just keep me sane. I grab a plate and toss a handful of dino nuggies on it before shoving them in the microwave, staring as they spin inside. With a satisfying ding, my morsels are done. I take the plate and plop onto my couch. The errant spring stabbing me in the ass, causing me to jump up with a yelp. Motherfucking son of a goddamn bitch, that fucking spring! continuing string of expletives escaped me as I checked to make sure it hasn't ripped straight through my pants. No damage done except to my cheek as I settle back in. I can't afford my normal BBQ sauce anymore. Having to make do with whatever's on sale. Even with mediocre sauce, they still bring me comfort as I toss a couple into my mouth, chewing them into tiny bits. It is one of the rare times when I can feel something at home other than misery. A comforting call of a place I long since left behind. Of a life I had given up after it had fallen apart. A few tears fall down my face as I try my best to enjoy my meal. Broken up by sobs I can't hold back. After I finish the last one, I throw the plate down and cover my face with my hands, leaning onto my knees as I sob. I had had such high hopes near the end of school. I was going to go places and live my life to the fullest like a rock star. Now all I do each day is go to a job, play for a couple of people, and try not to drag a knife across my wrists. My brother, my family, Dave, and my band are the only things keeping me from walking off a balcony. God fucking damn it! I shout as I slam my fist into my thighs. How did life get so screwed up? All I wanted was a new start, something to change so I could move past my fuck-ups. Pull my knees up to my face as I bury it into them. Sobbing and shaking on the couch. One night on the beach was all it took to ruin my life. One night to take every dream I ever had and smash them to bits. That one night leading me to every bad decision I made that brought me to here. Living in skin row, but too fucking proud to go back to my parents and make up for lost time. Instead, I just sit here. Waiting for the day where the reasons holding me back stop mattering. I'm just another statistic for a chart. Falling sideways, I pull the blanket up over me. My sobs slowing as my body gives into exhaustion, resting my head on what little pillow remains. As I close my eyes, one thought came back to my mind. Who was it that had been watching me play so intently? The person who seemed so entranced by my music, but at the same time looked so miserable at the end. I don't know why, but I hope he comes back. I want to not give a shit, like I did about everything else. But having an audience, it gave me a little bit of hope. I shouldn't, though. Hope got me where I am now, but I can't help it. It's a dim light in a sea of misery, and I didn't know how long it will last, but it's better than nothing. Sleep finally takes me away. The brief moments where there's relief and feeling nothing at all. End chapter two. All right. Well, we've seen Anon now. <laughs> <laughs> and on confirmed he's back ladies and gentlemen that's gonna be uh... let's let's play some bets bet she's gonna show up again the next day <laughs> and maybe even the day after 
Yes, that's the key difference. And E1 things are so much worse. So I'm almost forced to care more than try, but it's too late for that growth. Yeah, oh, I, I suppose that uh, that tracks a little bit, right? I mean, I think the thing with the E1 versus E2 is just that since, like, like I said earlier, Fang's just so far gone at that point. It really doesn't matter what if Anon was an asshole or not. Um, I mean, if Anon was like a super asshole in that one, I'm sure it would be like a, a case of um, not doing the don't come to school kind of thing. You know what I mean? But it's not safe after nine. What does nine sound like? Non. <laughs> Who has a non? Anon. It's not safe after Anon. <laughs> Holy shit. I love mental gymnastics. It fun to do. <laughs> oh, sad. He's alive. Good thing he's not dead. Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to take place after E2, right? So we're assuming that everything that we see at the end of E2 plays out. It wouldn't make sense for him to not be dead since he returns from the Navy and everything. Came in late. What's the fanfic about? TLDR wise. Um, so the fanfic is a post E2 fanfic. So far, it, the first two chapters have been kind of setting the stage for where Fang is mentally um, and everything. It's established the band that uh, she's playing with at the uh, pizzeria, as well as the, the owner of the pizzeria. And in the previous chapter, we had spotted Anon, but Fang did not recognize him yet. And now we're moving on to chapter three where presumably there might be a confrontation now that we've established Anon being here. I was almost scammed by a monk in Louisiana. Josh, how are you almost scammed by a monk? <laughs> how did that work? But uh, yeah, so just a quick uh, little bit of addition as well. There is 19 chapters. We will not be doing them all tonight. We're going to see how far we can get along before... I kind of feel like we should uh, cut it off for the night. I'm thinking maybe we can get to chapter 10 if we push it. And that would be a good place. Like a nice middle ground to leave it off on. Because um, otherwise this is going to be a fucking grinder of a stream. Which I think I want to... Since this is the first stream we're doing where we're trying to do some fanfic reading. I don't want to have it be super fucking long. So if we if everybody enjoys it enough... Uh, we will likely come back and do a part two to finish uh, what we don't finish tonight. So that's kind of the plan right now. Uh, speaking of E2, did you see the art book stuff about E2? No, I still hadn't gotten into um, the art book yet. Uh, <laughs> I've been meaning to. I just have been, other things have been on my mind and uh, I've been a little busy with some stuff. So I hadn't gotten a chance to peek in there. Maybe tonight after stream I'll take a peek. Uh, I know that people had said looking at the art book is not a good idea on stream since there is some NSFW in there. And I don't want to get uh, hyper banned from fucking uh, Twitch and YouTube. So that would not be an on stream thing. But yeah, I'll probably try and take a look at it between now and next stream. That way I can, you know, have context if anybody mentions anything from it. So... All right, I'm going to take just a quick break real quick. Um, I got to use the bathroom. So if anybody else wants to get up, go grab a drink. Use the bathroom yourself. Feel free. We'll be back in starting in probably about two minutes. So starting now, I'm going to cut to the BRB screen and then I'll catch you guys in a few minutes.
Okay. And we are back. I may or may not have speed read the entire fanfic. God damn. I forget that some people are really quick readers. Like, my brother's pretty fucking quick. I remember he crushed, like, some insanely long fanfic in, like, a day. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I want to say it had, like, a million words or some shit. And he just, he devoured that thing. I can't read super fast. I kind of... I kind of read in my voice, so like the speed at which I talk is usually about how quick I'm reading. I read a little bit quicker than that, don't get me wrong, but I am not like a speed reader. <laughs> I can read pretty fast if I want to. Yeah, some people, that's like, that shit's like a superpower to be honest. Do you have a list of future fanfics you'll do? Like I would recommend the fanfic Bonds, it's super good. Uh, no, I don't have a list yet. Um, like I said, this is kind of like an experimental type stream for me. I haven't done anything like this before. So I want to see how this turns out first before I start committing to doing like more fanfics and stuff. I've had the idea to read stuff on stream before. Um, particularly like, I don't know, there was like a, a phase where I was like, huh, would it be, it'd be kind of fun to read like SCP articles on stream or some shit. You know, just exercise the old vocal cords and everything. But uh, if people enjoy this enough, I'm down to do more uh, types of fanfics as well, and I'll be uh, opening it to suggestions from chat and everything. Uh, that way, we can probably find some pretty good ones, maybe ones that are not as well known uh, as well. Because like I said with this one, um, the way I uh, decided which fanfic we were reading tonight was I just went to AO3, filtered by the amount of kudos it had, and then chose one that uh, was under 100,000 words for our starting. Uh... There was a webcomic I read over the course of a single night. It wasn't worth it, but I couldn't stop myself. It was like a weird train, right? You kind of got that, you got the momentum going and you just couldn't pull the brakes. You're just like, I gotta, I gotta see it through now. Notice the more I'm enjoying the story, the slower I tend to read. Yeah, that tends, I, I feel like that tends to be a case with some people because you're uh, spending some more time trying to visualize everything and really digest everything that's happening in it. Um... At least that would be my explanation for it. The fan, uh, fan fiction does hold the title for having the largest written text ever. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Some people are very fucking passionate. And like, you know, like hats off to them. You know, <laughs> you guys are you guys are killing it out there. Couldn't be me writing that much, but go off, King. Reading SB articles articles is pretty good never seen a webcomic get worse in art style like it objectively got bad oh that's <laughs> you, you don't like to see that you like to see it when there's improvement but when it starts to if you don't mind me asking what was the uh what was the webcomic is it still the super smash bros fanfic or is it something else now and we go isn't worth it please believe me Okay, I, I look, I'll believe you. <laughs> also, not safe for work. Okay, yeah. I do want to, like, look it up, though, and see what you mean by how the art style degrades. Just, just so I have some context on that. I'll do that off stream, though, obviously. Jot that down real quick. Yeah, exactly. It's like chewing the scene and trying to picture things better. Mm-hmm. That, that, yeah, that tracks. Though, a little bit of a tangent, uh, because you said chewing, I suddenly started thinking about food. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna po I'm gonna throw this one out there to you guys. How quick do you eat? Like, in my family, whenever we would have a like a dinner, like me, my parents, and my brother, I would always be the one still eating at the end. I eat very slow comparatively to other people. Like, unless I'm starving. That food is not getting devoured. That food is just going to slowly disappear. And it's, it's especially the case when I like there's other people that I'm eating with. Cause like I I I I don't shut up. <laughs> I keep talking. I like my brain keeps wanting to say different things in a conversation. And it's like, no, you should keep going. It's like uh, you should probably keep eating. I'm like, oh yeah. Like by the end of the meal, sometimes my food will be cold. <laughs> Largest fan fiction is a Loud House crossover comic. 
Like, okay, so he got better as an artist, not denying, but it got uglier and weird. Okay, so the style... So, from from an artistic perspective, there was improvement, but from, like, a stylistic perspective, it degraded. Am I getting that right? Depends on how hungry I am and whether it's a meal I really like or not. Okay, so there's a lot of variables that go into it. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I can see that being the case then. Force myself to eat uh, last, or else I eat too much that nobody in my household gets any. See, that's the thing too. I don't eat a lot nowadays. Like, I'm usually good with about two meals a day and then a little bit of snacking. Um, and I mean, back in the day, like, I could crush a burger and some fries. But if I've had something else in the day nowadays, I would probably eat the burger mostly and then just pick at the fries a little bit. I don't know why. It feels like my stomach has shrunk a bit. I think there was like a brief, like a stint like a year ago where I just wasn't eating a lot. And I think that had some, uh, some long-term effects of me just like slowing down my, uh, my intake or, uh, reducing my intake pretty fast eater. I'm like a vacuum. Yeah. Some people are like that. My dad will fucking crush whatever's in front of him. Like you could look at him, look away for a minute or two, look back and like the mule will be gone. He, he does not waste any fucking time. He's there to eat and he's going to eat. For good web comics, two kinds and hunters of, uh, Salamanstra. If you're a furry and kill 6 billion demons. Cause it's peak kill 6 billion demons. That name goes fucking hard. Yo, that's a that's a fucking name and a half. Only three I keep up with. This is the chapters that we get more drama. I have figured that'd be the case given that Anon showed up now. We're 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 gonna get the confrontation that's gonna be like, uh oh. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing here? I'm sorry. <laughs> like if I'm really hungry and a good steak, that thing is gone gone. Yeah, I mean, if you're hungry, hungry, you can crush something pretty quick. I mean, even when I'm really hungry, usually I'll get through like half at like a quick speed and then I'll start slowing down is the thing. Sometimes I'm not paying attention. I can eat something in a couple minutes. I hate that because I'd eat enough, but I'd eat it so fast. I'd be still hungry, so I'll overeat. Yeah, I've never had an issue with overeating, really. Like, I'm always slow enough that I can feel when I'm starting to hit that. Okay. I'm not really that much hunger. I'm not really that hungry anymore. And the only reason I would continue is if I'm like, I don't get to eat whatever I'm eating very often. So I'm just going to pick at this just a bit more. Kill six billion demons is amazing. All right. I'll jot that one down as well then. Actually, I'll jot all three down. Doesn't hurt to have different things to look at. Two kinds. Hunters of Son of Monstra. And kill six billion demons. <laughs> All right, got those jotted down now. I know uh, two kinds. The writer's the brother of super famous YouTuber. Oh, is that um, is that Mark's brother? Two kinds. That's by Mark's bro, right? Okay, okay. I thought the name had sounded familiar. Tom Fishbach. This is uh, Markiplier's brother. Yeah, I think I think I remember hearing about that because, uh, I mean, I said it back in uh, back in the day. I watched Markiplier, and I think I remember him mentioning uh, his brother worked on a web comment like that. All right. Well, we've got. Uh, I guess I've got some extra liter literature for later. I still need to like. Let me take a look at my notes, because I've been jotting shit down from, like, these streams. Let's see. Okay, there was a couple of fanfics recommended that I wrote down. Here was, uh, here was the three mods that we played. I guess I can clear those out of the notes real quick. There was the mention of, uh, <laughs> doing a Snoop verse farting... Whoa. Fighting. I, I mixed fighting game, or fighting and archetype, and I came up with farting. Gotta love my shit-ass brain. Uh, Snoop vs. Fighting Archetype to your list. I remember we were having like a discussion on what characters would be what archetypes, and that would have been funny. And then we've got the couple of things here. The couple of webcomics. Tom only occasionally showed up in Mark's stuff, like maybe a Comic-Con vlog. 
they did orcs must die two or three yeah I don't, I don't remember really seeing him in any of the videos i just remember hearing mention of uh his brother and uh that he that he was working on like a webcomic and everything i think like shot yeah it, it would be mostly like shout out type deals from what i remember I like the art style i've seen i have to give it a full look though Ooh. okay that feels like a pretty good little uh intermission there uh, real quick just to check in you guys uh you guys uh, good with the uh, format we have here? Read the chapter, take a quick break, read the next chapter. <sighs> Who's the show of the Snoopverse? I said before, I'm not the kind of guy to ask about fighting game shit. My terminology is kind of not great. <laughs> I don't play many fighting games. So I'd have to pull up like a, a, a quick fighting game dictionary to really understand what a Shoto is. Probably post a uh, KSBD page for how cool it looks, and you'd have no context. So it really isn't spoilers? Sure. Why not? Gotta grab water. Yeah, make sure you're hydrating. Hydration's important. I make sure that I hydrate a lot during these fucking streams, that's for sure. <clears throat> Finish off this bottle that I had just sitting around. Good to go. And on an Inco. Yeah, I'm good with the format. Yeah, I, I feel like it's a pretty decent format, all things considered. I mean, that way we actually make some progress. But because if, if I was just reading all these chapters one after the other, what like what would be the difference between me doing like a live stream versus just recording it and then posting it, right? If I'm going to stream, I need to have some audience interaction. And the best place to put that is just between um, between these bookmark chapters. Shoto, and just usually the face with an all-round kit, has a projectile that can work at all ranges. Uh, okay. Let's see. If I had to think about a Shoto then for Snootverse. Uh... I'm trying to think like what would be a what would be a projectile that Anon would throw out. Like cuz I can think of something for Inko where it's a range, like a flash on the camera being a ranged attack, but they're usually the starter character like uh, Ryu and Ken or showed us cold pizza. He's gonna throw cold pizza. <laughs> oh boy. I feel like it would have to be Anon then, because of the fact that he is the original pro tag, right? I feel like it he fits the bill in that sense. And then we would just have to think about like a move set for him and everything. The emotional support thing is very important. Of course they are. Give him a boop real quick. They didn't like that one. Nor that one. Or that one. Or that one. Dino Nuggy. All right. <laughs> we love Dino Nuggy. Rainbow Rail Shot. I could work. Yeah. He just calls out Rainbow. I see Inko more as a rushdown. I feel like Inko would be more of a zoner. Like staying at range and just trying to keep play keep away. He could throw the Verm Drama C D. For his ranged attack, he throws whatever's in his pocket. Could it be the Verm Drama C D? Could it be a slice of cold pizza? Hell, it could be his tiny phone. Livia's the uh Liz is the zoner, got that long ass neck. Yeah. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more it'd be funny to do a little bit of a, a joke stream with all that shit. I'll, I'll have to think about how to get that all down. Or, like, 
I, first thing, I'd have to brush up on fighting game literature and understand what's what. So that way I'm not walking in and looking at chat and like, Guys, what does this one mean? He goes on to be more outgoing. Sticking his nose everywhere, so... So you rush down. There's the question, which ending versions would be the most interesting of the characters? Uh... If we're talking about Anon and Inko, I think... Anon's E3 would be... I feel like he'd be a grappler. And... That would be an inch... Because he's just fucking huge, man. He's big. Hit him with the heavenly Potemkin buster. You know what I mean? Uh, and then for Anna... Or for Inko... I think is E1. Just so that you've got a villain and like a heel. You know what I mean? Naomi's the puppet character controlling Nasser. <laughs> Nasser got demoted to being the puppet. He doesn't even get his own character. Feels terrible, man. Spears is a grappler, no doubt. Yeah. What would Reed be? Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't know. <laughs> Not gay, but E three anon. Well, you can you can like a beefcake. That's what you're allowed. Everybody's allowed to be a little gay as a treat. E one Fang would be crazy to play. For E one Fang's neutral, they wield a gun. All right. I'm gonna let you guys cook. You you, you guys can keep cook uh, cooking with the uh, the fighting game characters here. I'll take a look after we get through this chapter, and then uh, we we can just we can continue the discussion. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this rolling so that way, because if we're gonna get that ten chapters in, we're already an hour and a half in. We're only on chapter three. That doesn't bode us too well to get into chapter ten. You know what I mean? So <laughs> we're gonna need to start getting the uh, getting the old legs stretched out here. So. Feel free to keep cooking. We're gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and keep reading this now. So, here we go. Chapter three. <clears throat> Swan song. A month passes with me not even noticing at first, but each night we play, that same person is there. He always orders the same thing: a couple pieces of pizza and a drink if he's feeling rich, and then spends the whole night listening to my band. Each time he sees me, look at him, his face will shift. What little I can see is he always sits in the dimly lit section of the booths. He's ashamed to be seen. Part of me enjoys the attention. The other part of me is scared that I have somehow found myself a new stalker in Skin Row of all fucking places. I guess this place attracts all sorts of shit people, so a stalker probably wouldn't be anything new. My dreams lately have been a mix of depressing and sometimes different realities, where my life hadn't taken such a shitty turn. Me with a family of my own, my own house, job I could be proud of. Anon was in them as well. <laughs> Nothing had gone wrong. Our time not ending in a fucking disaster and him disappearing from the whole world. He's probably dead right now, taken out either by fast food or desperate junkie looking for the next fix. Thought it'd make me happy to think about him being gone for good, but I don't feel anything. The void in my chest still hangs where my heart used to be. Nazar had called me yesterday, and the conversation was at least a bit uplifting. Not that it ever lasts long before my indifference crushes every good feeling. Grunting, I pull myself up off the couch, my clothes loosely hanging from my body. Ooh. I pull up my shirt and notice I've gotten even thinner. It's been hard to even eat my nuggies these days. Like a food making me sluggish and shaky. I nearly fell down the stairs yesterday trying to go to work. I sigh as I steady myself and go to the kitchen. If nothing else, I need to get something in me or else I won't be able to perform. I have a special song I wrote a couple weeks ago, and tonight is the best time to play it before I waste away into nothing. Dave has noticed my deteriorating state, trying to give me even more food, but it just ends up in the trash. 
Pulling a can of soda out of the fridge and a couple stale slices of pizza, I work my way through it, forcing myself to eat every last bite regardless of how little I want to. It settles roughly in my stomach, my guts trying to return it to sender, but I stifle down the nausea before stumbling my way into the shower. I limply throw my clothes on the floor and step into my shower. I brace myself up against the wall with one arm as I let the water cascade over my body. Even as the tepid water flows over me, it still feels better than nothing, my shaped scalp offering no resistance to the streams of water. Soap and water, the bare minimum. Not like I have any hair left to wash. I stay in the water for at least 20 minutes, staring off into nothing, my thoughts drifting into dark places in my mind. Sighing, I finally turn off the water and step back out of the shower, grabbing a barely clean towel to dry off with before flinging it to the floor. I stare deeply into the mirror, at my gaunt reflection. My ribs show through my scales now, my stomach only rounded because of the food I just ate. My eyes are growing duller by the day, the amber sheen a mere glint. I had to give it a break with the cigarette burns on my arms before Dave started noticing. I don't know how much longer I can last like this. All I know for certain is, if I don't turn things around soon, the apartment will be my tomb, like it must have been for so many others. I weakly reach out for my eyeliner and lipstick. My hands shake as I do everything I can to steady them, so I don't look like a fucking mess. Somehow, I have managed to keep it looking pretty good with how, how little strength I have. Pulling on my clothes, same outfit as every, do every other day, I feel a small bit of energy returning as my body absorbs what little food I've been able to keep down. I hope it'll be enough to get me through tonight's performance. Then I'll have another lonely weekend to hopefully pull myself back together before I die on this floor. I walk back into the living room, grab my base case, and sling it over my shoulder, causing me to stumble down onto one knee. Raptor Jesus, is it really this bad that the weight of my base can knock me to the floor? The grim reality of my increasingly bad situation steadies itself in my mind. Am I really going to die of malnutrition of all things? Fuck me. Of all the ways to go, this would be the most pathetic. Even then, I can only just bring myself to eat enough to stay on two feet, let alone gain any weight. Tears slides down my cheek and drops to the floor as I struggle back to my feet. I need to go tonight. I wrote that song. Can't let it die with me if this really is how things are going to end. Setting myself up. Setting myself after getting up, I take a deep breath, spying a protein bar on the counter that Benji had given me and devouring in one bite. Hopefully that'll be enough to get me through what I hope isn't my last song. Though, at the same time, would I really care? I suppose not. My life has been one disappointment after another. At least this way it'll end with some kind of beauty to it. I push open my door, turning to lock it behind me before carefully walking down the steps. I do not need to die by falling down the stairs, splattering across the concrete in the middle of this decrepit building. Finally making it to the bottom of the steps, I turn down the sidewalk, taking the walk I have so many times before. I swear I've worn a rut into the concrete by now. The trip is as desolate as usual. The same beggars lining up for a coin from above, the rain yesterday having left a sea of rotting cardboard and puddles in the alleys. As I make it to the pizzeria, I have at least gained a good chunk of energy from the protein bar, and left to have made the walk go by a bit faster. I slide inside the door. I slide. I, I slide inside the side door, trying to make my way to the back room without being seen. But Dave catches sight of me and calls me. Uh, calls out to me. Fang. Can you come here a second? He stands expectantly by the fridge, with his arms crossed, look of worry on his face. I sigh and go over to him. He's still my boss, so I can't go blowing him off. Tiredly turn my eyes up to his, wind, his wan smile. What is it, Dave? Something on your mind? I don't want to have another one of these conversations, but it's not like I have much of a choice. He frowns as he looks me over, my physical state having only gotten worse. Jesus, Fang. There's barely anything left of you. Have you been eating the food I've sent you home with? I nod weakly. I have, Dave. Every little bit I can get in me, I promise. I'm in a really rough patch right now. I'm sorry. I promise I'll be okay. 
Please don't worry about me. I'll still be here every day. We need to recover from this funk. Don't send me home, please. I need to do this tonight. He looks me over again, still with a frown on his face. But he eventually relents and puts a hand on my shoulder. <sighs> Alright, Fang. I'll trust you. But please, if you need anything, just ask me. I'm here for you. Whatever I can do to help. I place my hand on his, attempting to allay his fears. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate the offer, but don't worry. I'll be fine. A little more rest and food will do me good later tonight. But for now, I've got a show to do. I sway the case on my shoulder side to side to make a point. I need to be here tonight, no matter what. He sighs and pulls his hand from my shoulder, letting me pass. All right, go give him a great show like you do every night. I smile and turn my back and turn back toward the break room. The rest of the band was already here getting their stuff squared away. I told them I had an important song to play tonight, so they let me rest a little more and took care of all the stage work. They both turned to me as I enter, worried looks on their faces as if I haven't gotten enough of those already this week. Benji pipes up first. Hey, Fang, we got it all ready for you. All you gotta do is plug in when you're on stage and we'll be good to go. Shoots me a thumbs up while putting his guitar strap in place. Jacob turns from the sandwich he's chowing down on to nod. Yep, we're here for you, Fang. We'll do our normal set and you can do you can end on that special song you wrote. I smile softly at them both. These two dweebs will never know how much they've helped make uh helped me make it past these few years. With them, I at least have a creative outlet to get something out of me before the worst happens, whatever that would be. Thanks, guys. I need this to go well tonight. I can't promise we're going to end on a happy note, but I've needed to get this out for a long time. And right now felt like the best fucking time for it. I sing my case onto the couch before popping open the latches and pulling up my bass. It's been a good chunk of yesterday shining it up and making sure the strings were perfectly tuned. I wonder if I'll have my little audience member tonight. I hope so, since they might be the only one that wants to hear what I have to sing tonight. Draping the strap across my shoulder, I stand up as straight as I can. Come on, guys. Let's go give them the show to remember. They both nod happily and follow me out on the stage. They weren't joking. The whole thing was immaculately set up, with not a thing out of place. I plug in my bass before looking out onto the crowd. We have a decent number tonight. Friday is always a little more packed, since most get paid today and pick up a few pizzas for the rest of the week. I scan the room to see if my maybe stalker admirer is out in the crowd. And I see him in the back as usual. He has his drink already, and pizza was probably going to be out to him in a few moments. Well, here goes nothing. I at least have an alright crowd to play to if this is the last night I'll be playing anything. With a nod to my band, we play a few of our normal songs to warm the crowd before I get to the one that matters most, uh, means something to me. It'll break their hearts when they hear it, but... It's how I feel right now. Cold. Alone. Desolate. And hopeless. I want something to dream about. And all I can dream of these days is misery and futures I'll never have. The audience didn't thin out as usual. <laughs> Guess the urgency in my singing is attracting their attention for once. After we get through a couple more songs, I turn to them and give them the signal that it's time. They both take their places and dim the lights, solely lighting up me in my fragile state upon the stage. I look sad, broken, hurt, and shattered. Perfect representation of how I feel inside. A tear falls down my cheek as I lean up to the microphone and start to sing a song that comes from the depths of my heart. Alright, so we've got a whole song here, huh? All right, let's read the lyrics, shall we? Our hearts were entwined, full of love. Hopes as high as the sky above. Nothing to stop us from dreaming. But then my wishes, my life, my everything fell. Lost in the darkness, from far from lights gleaming. Lost in the darkness, lost in black screaming. How I want to dream again, to feel again. But how can I dream, standing alone in the rain? 
Oh God, how I need to dream again, to feel again. Please, let me once again dream without pain. On that beach we shared our lives, our future, our love and our future. Then in an instant you opened wounds, time alone could not suture. Cold misery killing my heart and soul. Daggers stabbed into my body left a gaping hole. My dreams died alone that dark night. Grains of sand from the beach filled my heart with spite. How I want to dream again, to feel again. But how can I dream, standing alone in the rain? Oh God, how I need to dream again, to feel again. Please let me once again dream without pain. I left you behind, frozen inside. A withered husk, my heart dead and dried. Bleeding still, my soul impaled by a knife. Suffocated by desires I never can tell. I'm desperate to heal, but bound by your life. A branching pathway ahead, bordered by strife. How I want to dream again, to feel again. But how can I dream, standing alone in the rain? Oh God, how I need to dream again, to feel again. Please, let me once again dream without pain. Please. Please let me dream. Please. Please let me dream again. As I sing every verse, my body quakes. Tears stream down my face as I let my heart be on display. The somber tone of my voice and the soft rumbling sounds of my instrument combined into a melody that left not a single eye dry in the audience. If it is to be my swan song, it is the most beautifully painful way it can end. I open myself up to the whole crowd, calling out for healing, desperately wanting to feel something more again, to care again, to dream. My hands glide across the strings of my bass, adding weight and depth to my words. My beak shakes as I hold my composure together as best I can. A final note strings out across the room from my base as I hold the last word, letting it linger before finally turning my head down to the floor. To my amazement, I got a few soft cheers and claps from the audience. I can hear their sniffles, and for a moment I feel like a real musician again. Someone who has a life ahead of them rather than just one disappointing show after another. My eyes land upon my one constant audience member. He's a wreck, trying hard to clap as tears stream down his face. It is odd. As he leans forward into the light a little more, I almost think I know him, but that isn't possible. No one I know lives here except the people that work here. It's just a coincidence, nothing more. I pull the mic to my lips and smile. Thank you, everyone. That song meant a lot to me, and I was happy to share it with you, as painful as it was to sing about my life. That's the end of tonight's show. I hate to leave you on a bittersweet note, but that's all we had left. Thank you, and good night. I waved to the crowd, bowing weakly as all my strength was spent with that song. I earned a couple more claps and cheers before turning, my bandma- turning to my bandmates, who were drying tears on their sleeves. <clears throat> you go on ahead, Fang. We'll take care of cleanup, Benji says, his tear-stained eyes reddening. Jacob can't say anything other than nod in agreement, as he fights hard to keep his face dry. Thanks, guys. I think... I think I'm gonna go sit by the beach tonight. The little one off the road close by. Listening to the waves would do me some good. I unstrap my base and give them both a hug before heading into the back room. I gently place my base in the case, latching it up and slinging it back over my shoulder before turning around right into Dave, who is looking down at me with tears in his eyes. He doesn't say a word as he puts his arms around me and pulls me into a hug. I can't do anything other than hug him back, a few tears staining his apron. He never says anything. He doesn't need to. The look in his eyes lets me know he knows exactly what I just revealed to everyone this night. My broken heart. We delicately end our embrace with me giving him a tearful smile, him doing the same. He stands aside and I make my way out the side door and walk toward the beach. It's empty, as usual, save for the trash scattered around on the sands. It's not like the other beaches in Volcadera. Not a soul ever comes down here to clean up. Mostly because no one is crazy enough to try while worrying about getting shanked by a junkie. After setting my base down beside me, 
I take a seat on the concrete bench. My performance brought me some catharsis, but it also reopened old wounds, bringing every bit of that night back to me in full force as I silently suffer alone with tears streaming down my cheeks. At least I've told my story. If nothing else, if I really do die soon, people out there know me now. And they won't forget the little pterodactyl woman on the stage this night. As I listen to the waves crashing on the shore, I can hear steps behind me. <laughs> if it is a murderer coming to take my life, I decide to not uh I decide not to bother to do anything to stop them. I feel so content in this moment of clarity. My life told out in song and nothing can take it from me. Death will just be another world to explore if anything those religious people told me is true. I'm ready for it. But as I wait for a knife to find its way into my ribs, nothing comes. The footfalls stop a dozen feet away. Finally, I hear someone speak. <clears throat> that song was beautiful. I don't think I've heard something so painful yet alluring in all my years. The voice seems familiar, but I don't turn around yet. Too absorbed in the afterglow following the show. Thank you. It's the real story of my life. How one night everything I had hoped for died in an instant. One argument bringing me to where I am now. Here in Skin Row. Waiting for the end to come. A pained smile spreads across my face as my tattered wings flutter in the ocean breeze. The saltwater mist dusting across my face. I don't think I'll ever hear anything as graceful as that again. If this is where it would end for you, which I don't think it will, far too special for a person for life to end so miserably. Fang. It's the way he says my name that strikes through my core. Every feeling comes rushing back as the realization hits me of who this person is. I stand up and I slowly turn around to face who I can, who I know can be no one else but... Can't be. Anon? The name leaves my lips in a painful tear. I want to hate him. I want to scream at him right now, but I can't find it in me. Not yet. Here he is. After four years, after disappearing from my life following that night on the beach, where all we shared ended in such a shitty way, he doesn't turn away from me, simply stares right into my eyes. I can see the shame in them, the misery, the regret. He looks terrible, bloodshot eyes with heavy bags under them. He's physically stronger, that's for certain. Not sure where he has been, but it has done nothing bad for his physique. Yet still, he barely looks like he's here. A man out of place with nothing left to live for, yet pushing on just like I have. I can see the scars on his wrists peeking out from his pulled up sleeves. He's made attempts of his own to escape from whatever hell he's living through. Fang, I... I hold up my hands, stopping him. Don't. Don't you dare talk yet. He shuts his mouth immediately and waits for me. I quietly stand in place, my whole body shaking as I stare daggers at him. As much as there is a piece of me that still cares, I'm furious. I need to get it out. Staring straight into his eyes, with all the pain and fury I can muster, I point a claw at his chest. You come back now? After four fucking years? Four years after shitting all over me, insulting me, and then disappearing off the face of the earth. I move closer to him with my fist clenched tight. Why, Anon? Why the fuck did you do that to me? Did everything we have together mean nothing? My face twists in rage and sorrow as I glare at him. Or are you here to tear me down some more? What else is there left to take? Look at me! I spread my arms wide and stretch out my tattered wings to their full, pitiful span. Tears stream down my face, my body trembling as I let him take in the view of my shattered form. My nigh featherless wings in gaunt shape. The luster in my eyes long since dulled. There is nothing left to hurt. 
Just a broken body with a dying soul devoid of any hopes and dreams. Slowly wasting away to nothing as I can barely even eat anymore. You were everything to me. You were supposed to go against the world together, but you broke me. You tore my heart out and stamped it into dust. I lost everything. Everything that mattered to me. And all that remains is a miserable husk, scarcely able to be called alive. I slumped to the ground, my knees hitting the sand as I sob. I stare up at him, with my teeth bared as I try to focus through the tears. Why did you do it, Anon? Why did you do that to us? Why didn't you ever come back and try to make things right? Why... Why did you leave me so alone? Why didn't you come back? I bury my face in my hands as tears pour from me. I'm breaking down on the beach once again. A man who I'd loved so much, yet had hurt me so badly right in front of me. Again. After four fucking years. I heard the sand crunching as he lowers himself down on his knees beside me. He looks me square in the eyes as I pull my hands away to glance at him. Tears are pouring from him, and I can see that every bit of pain I unleash hits its mark. We stare at each other for a few moments that stretches out into an eternity before I pull him into an embrace. So many more things need to be said. So much more pain to get out in the open. But right now, none of it matters. My arms slide around his back as I press him against me, and I rest my head against his shoulder. I need to feel something. Something more than the emptiness I've lived with for so long. He cautiously wraps his arms around my back, holding me as we both sob into each other's arms. The pain and regret of four years of mistakes pours out of us. Goes on for minutes, but feels like so much longer. I grip the back of his shirt tightly as he does mine. Loud, shaky sobs pour from my beak as, for the first time in years, I feel something more than apathy. I feel sad. I feel so good as I let it all out. After a while, we slowly leave our embrace and he stands back up, helping me back on my feet. Anon looks at me before taking a moment to think before he speaks. Thank, I can never make up for that night. I can never undo the shit I said when I was drunk and stupid. I've had four years to think about how badly I hurt you, how I fucked up the only good thing I had in my life, and how much I wanted to just shove it aside and forget about everything about you because I thought I deserved and wanted to be alone. But I was fucking wrong, Fang. I was fucking wrong about everything. I'm so sorry for what I said. I can't take it back and pretend it didn't happen. I can just tell you how fucking sorry I am that I hurt you like that. He shakes with every sentence. Each word is heartfelt as last. I can see it in his eyes. He's broken and miserable above all else. He's sorry. I take his hands in mine, causing him to jump a little. He stares into my eyes as I do this. My face is an expression of sorrow, but also of great relief. To hear such things even after so many years. I swallow the knot in my throat before speaking again. Anon, I accept your apology. His eyes are swimming in tears as he listens to me. And I apologize as well for treating you like shit at the concert and not caring about when you'd been knocked the fuck out. But... I can see the apprehension in his face as he lingers on that word. We can't just go back to the way things were. Not yet. There needs to be time to heal and for us to maybe build back what we had again. I'm not ruling anything out, nor am I throwing you aside. I'm willing to give our friendship another chance. And perhaps things might work out. Who knows? I shrug and smile at him. He dries his tears with his sleeve before turning back to me with a smile on his face. I... I'd like that thing. I didn't come down here thinking you'd just jump back in my arms and be boyfriend and, uh, partner. He stumbles on the last word, and I smirk up at him. I'm not non-binary, Anon. Long story, but I'm glad you cared enough to try. 
And yeah, you didn't expect us to slide back into boyfriend and girlfriend. You'd be right. There's a lot of healing for us to do before I could even remotely be in the picture, but for now... I hold his hands tightly in mine. Friendship is a wonderful place to start, don't you think? He nods with a huge grin on his face, sniffling back a few tears. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the best thing to happen to me in over four fucking years, Fang. Uh, do you play at pizza time every night? Every weekend. The weekdays are my days off. Or, every weeknight. The, weekday the weekends are my days off, such as they are. Not that I really do anything outside of work and playing music. So, do you think maybe we could hang out a bit on the weekends? As friends, of course. Skin Row is a lot less scary in a group. He laughs sheepishly with a hint of a blush dusting his cheeks. I smile at him again and nod. Sounds great to me, Anna. It's been a shitty, lonely four years. I could use some hangout time with a friend. Do you live here too? Yeah, funnily enough, in the same crap apartment I lived in before. It, somehow it's even worse if you can believe it. You definitely could, dweeb. I've been living here since you left, Skin Row. It's only gotten worse and more downhill since. I see him trying to look away as I call him dweeb. I guess it still holds some emotional meaning for him even now. I live right over there. I point to a nearly falling apart structure down a couple blocks. Trust me. You haven't seen shitty till you've seen the hallways of that place. He laughs, letting my hands go before putting his in his pocket. You still got your phone? Mm hmm. Same one, same number. Give me yours, though. I kind of. Well, you know. Yeah, I didn't expect you to keep it after how shit went down. He quickly tells me his number. I type it in my contacts before slipping my phone into my pocket. Well, I need to get some sleep, Anna, but text me sometime, okay? Got a lot of catching up to do and a lot of hatchets to bury. You got it, Fang. I'll catch you tomorrow. I nod, grabbing my base from the bench, sharing one last hug before going our separate ways. We turn back one more time and stare at each other. Two broken souls looking for a way to heal. And perhaps we finally found it. I give him one last smile before leaving and going back up into my apartment. It is still a shithole, but it's my shithole, and right now I couldn't give a fuck whatsoever about how crap it was. I'm on cloud nine. I have a chance to fix... I have a chance now to fix my broken life, and maybe, just maybe, put all that crap behind me. I clear off my table and set out a freshly heated pizza and tear into it. My hunger's returning. I am fucking ravenous. After nearly inhaling two boxes of pizza, I finally slump over my couch. Check my phone, see a little text popping up saying test. Fucking dweeb. I take back a quick pass before letting my phone drop onto the couch. I'm exhausted. I desperately need some sleep. At least for the time being. At least for the first time in a long time. I feel like there's maybe something about my life I can change. Maybe that song doesn't have to be the last thing I ever do. Life could be worth living again, with a tiny spark of hope. Alright. Chapter 3 completed. Ugh, time to pop over to chat for a minute and brush up on what, uh, what everybody was uh, cooking up over here. Let's see here. Do 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 do. We'd probably be a great area denial with clouds of smoke. Fang's dad's a boss character. Damien, Wreck of Fighter, maybe. Trish would be footsies. That would be a lighter multi combo type. Or a heavy hitter. Wasn't expecting a stream of stories. Is Nazar not just an all rounder? Yeah, he could be. I just think I suppose Nazar's a rushdown. Do have a big brain move? We do a big brain move and have no all round fighter in a snoot base. Snoot first fighting game. Ugh. A little, bit of, a little bit of a bumpy there. Maybe a non-ending version of Anon and Co. Could all be round. Could be all rounders. That make kind of sense. Clapping, I think, when um, Anon showed up during the beach scene there. Still think Naomi is a puppet character. Trish should be hyper armor. I feel like Mia would be the Z Broly from Fighters. 
to have the puppet pal mod character be an actual puppet fire good one there feels pretty fitting given how miserable both their lives have been makes sense they'd kind of jump at the chance to try and make up if one of them just made the first step i suppose i could see that but i feel like i feel like there could have been a bit more there a bit more tension um that's just my own personal opinion though but you know let's see pleasant surprise you're doing more snoot game had no idea about this good thing you know or good thing now good thing i know now yeah no um i decided i was gonna i, I kind of mentioned in the first couple or like the last couple streams but i was uh thinking about maybe just doing like some fanfic reading for the hell of it um because in the past i talked about maybe doing something reading wise and after finishing up some mods and all of Snoot Game, it made sense to take a look at some of the um, fanfics, especially since people were mentioning them in chat. This is the first fanfic you read, or was there another? Nope, this is the... Uh, tonight we're only going to be focusing on Broken Wings. Um, so, you know. Should be... We're, we're going to try and get to halfway point. No promise on that. We're already two hours in and we're only on chapter four. Um, I don't want to be going all, all night, so... What's up, meet again? How you been? Been pretty good. We've just been reading all night, chilling out and everything. Hope things have been good for you. Oh, that's Lucy, aka Fang. Nice touch up. Yeah, maybe have Fang blow him off. Keep giving, uh, have him keep coming, showing he really means it. Maybe something like that. I, I just feel like there would have been a lot more. Um, what's the word? a lot more that Fang would have needed to air out before like agreeing to really talk to Anon again. Awesome hearing. Yeah. Been good too. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Unfortunately, I joined a few minutes ago, torn between keeping up with stream chat and starting from the beginning. Yeah. I think the uh, chat's linked in the description on the YouTube stream. So if you did want to uh, go read it, feel free. You'll probably catch up to us. Um, I'm a bit of a slower reader, uh, especially since I'm reading out loud, so it probably wouldn't be too hard to get uh, up here to chapter four. I believe uh, one of the uh, some uh, someone else in chat, uh, uh, Vanderstein, uh, actually speed read the whole fucking <laughs> the whole fucking fanfic while we were reading earlier. So you know, it, it wouldn't take too long. Finally caught up with you guys. Had to pause the stream for a while to do something. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Anybody who wants to try and like, if you missed, like I said, if you missed, you can easily catch up pretty quickly. By the end of reading chapter four, I'm sure you'll either be right behind us or in front of us. If you want a rougher experience, Bad Apple doesn't pull punches. If you want a better written, bittersweet one, in my opinion, Bonds, just future suggestions. I did see those with the uh, high kudos as well. Um, would have went for one of those if they weren't as long as they were. Um... I mentioned it earlier. I picked one that was under a hundred thousand words for the first kind of trial stream of this. Um, since I haven't done this type of content before. So we needed to, I didn't want to lock myself in on one of those and then be like, okay, well now I'm going to have to figure out like the, like how to do this for like four parts. Cause it's, it would take me a while to read all that. I got most of it. Yeah. But didn't read, uh, fully read through it. We got most of the chapter. Bad Apple's getting a mod as well. Oh, really? Like it's getting adapted into a mod, because if so, maybe uh, maybe I would hold off on that and um, check it out when it uh, get, comes out as a mod potentially. Yeah, the other posted some new sprites they got made. Okay, okay. I guess I'll uh, I'll jot that down as um, in the notes real quick. Keep an eye on that. on that no spoilers but this one kind of speeds past some of the conflicts it creates it's good but i feel like it could have been better yeah i kind of get uh just just from like that last chapter and how they handled the reunion of the two i kind of got the feeling that maybe they would not dwell on certain things as long as i would personally like but we'll still we'll, we'll still go through it 
we'll still get to at least the halfway point we'll, we'll keep reading for the rest of this stream and then by the end we'll decide if we wanted to continue or not um personally i would like to read through all of it just so that way it's you know we don't just leave it hanging but we'll see we'll see how we feel you have the link for a bad apple use them yeah look it up uh, I don't have the link to Bad Apple right now, but if I really wanted to, I could probably just, let's see, let me, where is it, F11, by Volcano High, filter, kudos, uh, should be like up here, yep, right here, Bad Apple. Can't stick around tonight, unfortunately, all good. If you got if you got places to be, I understand. I think the overall quality is good. Speeding conflict aside, okay. Well, that's good to hear. At least I can forgive some things. Wait, there it is. There. Just grab the numbers at the end by accident. Oh, okay. I think you guys are sharing links in chat, and I can't see them right now. <sighs> Anyone have experience with that Etsy Fang plushie? Thinking of buying one for myself. I do not. But that said, worst case you have a Fang plushie. Best case you have a Fang plushie, right? <laughs> hmm. Oh man, I don't know why. I started off stream feeling a bit chilly, but now I'm feeling like the room has heated up and it's probably because my dumb ass has been yapping for two hours straight and just sucking all of the, uh, the cool air out of the, uh, out of the, uh, surrounding air, cool air out of the surrounding air. What the fuck does that even mean? My yapping probably has increased the temperature of the room is what I'm trying to get at. Meh fang plushie minus 100, or good fang plushie minus 100. You have to take that debuff regardless. Ugh. Also, it's funny that the top two fix for when we hug that gator just replace and go with Anna, it seems. Wait, real shit? That's funny. I mean, we, we kind of talked about it before when we were playing Snoot Game. Uh, when it comes to if you were character swapping the main characters, Anon and Olivia would probably get along way better than ugh, Inko and Fang. Well, people do like their Anon. Good fucking reason, too. I think Umbra is a YouTuber. He's done some meme videos, yeah. If they could break the ice, very true. I mean, like, that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the thing with all of the uh, Snoot verse shit, right? Characters could get along, but would they ever be in a situation where they would be forced to like talk in the first place? I mean, it's kind of happenstance for both situation or for both um, both couples getting together, right? I mean, with uh, Anon and uh, Anon and Fang, obviously Naomi was pulling strings for that. Otherwise, it probably wouldn't have happened. Looking up something on my other monitor real quick. Okay. Close that. Pull this back up. Pull this back up. Oh shit! Why did it jump over there? <laughs> Sometimes it just jumps to my left monitor for whatever reason. Like I left it minimized on the right, and it just said, Hey, stream, you wanna see what it looks like? You wanna see infinite for a second? Whoopsies. <laughs> that was a big oopsies. Okay. Let's see here. 
going to start from the beginning for this. Also funny how you went from video games to VNs to now light novels, fanfics. Next on the list, classic literature. Yeah, you know. I mean, I still sprinkle in the video games there. I mean, like, what? W- w- fucking yesterday we were playing Voices of the Void. It's just, I, you know, keep the variety going. You know, pe- obviously a lot of people in chat are people that joined up because they saw the either Wani playthrough or the Snoop playthrough. So, you know, if... If I'm going to do some reading streams, it kind of tracks that I should do a reading stream reading some Snoop Game fanfics, right? E1 Inko with Fang sounds horrendous. E1 E1 Inko would get shot by E1 Fang, for sure. Yetikin would have to approve of Anon, basically. I think Anon would get along with Damien, I think. Hmm... Would he? Yeah. Yeah, because, like, Damien's a little bit of a mix of both Reed and Nazar, in a sense. So I think he could probably get along with Damien. Might not bat for the antisocial shut-in. I think Iadikin would find a way to warm up to Anon. As long as Anon seemed to be willing to try and open up to some extent. I think Anon is overall not necessarily better written, but just more than Inko. I've said it before, it feels like Anon has more initiative in the story. And actually does more. So as a result, he's going to feel a bit more fleshed out comparatively to Inko. Good as you. I watched several Snoot Wani streams. The only stream I actually checked out afterwards. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's what I like to hear. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> if you ran science, maybe. Anon is more relatable than Inko since Inko has more of an established interest that is niche in art and photography. Inko from the beginning was already outgoing, so he had less room to grow than Anon. Right, I mean, he he shows up at school saying, I want to make friends. Anon shows up at school and says, fuck, <laughs> I hope nobody looks at me. Can't wait for the Wani fix. You know, I have a good one called Final Glimpse for next time. Both have established interests. I think he had to grow to be less shallow. If we're talking about Inko, yeah. Because, like, he, he has, like, um, the whole vanity thing when he shows up. Like, when everybody's looking at him, he's like, Oh, shit. Th- they must really like my Gucci jacket and glasses. Yeah. This attention is really cool. Anon's at the bottom. He goes more in the middle. I don't even think Anon's necessarily at the bottom. Like, even at the beginning, he has... He has some redeeming qualities. It's just... His his good qualities start to come out more and more as as the story goes. I want to put Angry Rosa and Angry Mia in an MMA ring and see who wins Rosa, hands down. Rosa would fucking flatten Mia. I say with, with if, for whatever reason, the most confidence I've ever had. <laughs> I don't even know why, but I just get this weird feeling. Anon is more reliable because Anon is an average kid who grew up on the internet like most people. Where the audience for this are. Yeah, I mean, it's like, Anon's definitely more... I feel like the with the, the type of audience that's playing Snoot Game, uh, Anon is going to be the one that res, uh, resonates more with them. He was sheltered and wasn't that down to earth. Inko finally glimpsed is like four chapters. Inko is that, sn- <laughs> that snooty posh kid nobody likes. I feel like that's a little bit too much on Inko. He definitely, he's definitely a bit higher class, sure, but at no point did he ever really come across, other than in like the the worst endings, like especially when he was talking about the sushi, he's like, you guys are eating the sushi wrong. Guys, you're supposed to do it this way. Oh my God, you're fucking up the whole culture. Other than that, Inko's kind of just like, more like, "Eh, okay, (laughs) sure, all right. Anything he would think that would be snooty would be more of an internal thought than anything external. Inko's growth was a lot more subtle. 
yeah, his growth was a lot more subtle, but his his downfall and the worst endings are a lot more obvious. Rosa has that Latina strength, bro. I ain't fucking with that. It's also for debate. Who's smarter, Inko, Damien, or a box of rocks? Uh, I don't know. I mean, what kind of rocks are we talking here? Because, like, that affects, that affects the standing pretty hard there. Man, people keep showing me the story. I've read it a bit. It's good. Could have some refinement, though. Yeah, we've we talked a little bit about it already. There's uh, some gripes with um, how they're hand how, how they've handled at least the reunion uh, between the two so far. But uh, we're still gonna keep chugging through it. More relatable, not reliable. Never underestimate an angry Latina. Never. And on his four chain, he goes Reddit. When's the Twitter, iFunny, and YouTube comment pro tags? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't get the Twitter guy. Don't get the Twitter guy. We're going to fucking hate him. It's not lording money because he's never had uh, money issues, basically. Yeah, no, obviously, Inko's never had any. He's never... He's never struggled in that aspect. Yeah, he got down to earth thanks to normal people around him. Inko is more Tumblr, to be honest. Inko overall overall had far far more character structure than Anon. In fact, it's what made him harder to develop since he already had so much crap already on him. He was crazy as fuck in my opinion. Inko's a doofus. Anon is snarky. Definitely like my snarky smart asses. Yeah, they usually have some pretty good uh some pretty good uh comebacks and some pretty good dialogue. Yeah, I think it was more Tumblr. That's spot on. Assorted rocks? Fuck. You can't really get a good read on the IQ of assorted rocks because some of them bring it up, some of them bring it down. But I think if we're going to average it, if we're saying we, we have a good, a good amount of high-end and low-end IQ rocks, I think that they would probably be able to beat at least Inko. In the in in the smarts department, Damien still coin flip. Damien's got that sleeper intelligence. Thank God E four is canon since that one makes sense. Yeah, we 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 gotta love that our our, uh, our E fours are canon because it makes us feel good. <laughs> We're like, okay, nothing bad happened. Thumbs up all around. What's another word for anonymous and incognito? We could predict future bro tags. I was thinking about that. I'd have to go look at a fucking like thesaurus. I'm not uh I'm not good with words. My words are very basic. My lexicon is small. Lexicon is probably one of the biggest words I have. <laughs> Snoot subreddit has been cooking up their own games now. New a new a account account new account is a good one. Oh yeah, I remember seeing uh Nua on the on the Snoot Reddit. I wasn't sure what the uh what their whole name was because I never saw it in full, but that that makes sense. I mean, there was a school of snooting in E1 for snoot. Hard to compare that to tumble down the stairs. Which which E1 was worse, snoot or wani? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, snoot's was way worse. Snoot, snoot's E1 is way worse than wani's E1. The, the only thing that wani's E1 does better than snoot's E1 is make you hate the protagonist more. <laughs> Makes Anon and Fing's banter feel more organic in a way. Yeah, their back and forths are really nice. Can't wait for... Can I stego... Stego kiss or... Kiss that sore... Feet... Fucking fuck. That whole sentence made me just short circuit. Can I stego kiss that sore? Starring Skib T. Oilet. Don't bring Skib T. Oilet out here. Don't bring Skip Toilet out here. Has anybody actually watched like Skibbity Toilet? Like I'm gonna be, I'm, 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 I'm a hundred percent serious. Has anybody watched it? I haven't. One of my friends apparently has and says it's pretty good. But like, how do you, how do you even start that? Snoot was a worst case scenario, but it was kind of. In motion without Anon, wanting a lot more personally caused. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Like, that's the thing, right? Because 
I mean, like when you look at the two E ones, E one Wani, Anna or not Anna, Inko is a fucking dickhead, and he pretty directly is pushing Olivia to the breaking point. Whereas an E one, um, E one. Uh, Snoot, I don't know why it took me so long to think about that. E1 Snoot, Anon doesn't help, but it wasn't like things were going to end well without him being there anyways. Just gave me a stroke. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. Yeah, I just felt bad for Anon and E1. Boy was trying, but just didn't know how to. Yeah, and it's like, it's it kind of, it's unfortunate for him because it's like, he's never really been in a situation like that where he would even know what to do in the first place. He's never had to kind of handle all that was there. And I mean, he fucked up, but <laughs> I don't think he deserves what happens <laughs> as a result. This new subreddit is oddly wholesome. Every time someone comes up with a new dino GF, everyone just says, keep cooking. <laughs> We gotta bring more into the world. Everyone needs to support each other. More dinos equals more more art equals more happy. You snoot here is the closest I've got to social media. Nothing new. Vinny knows all the skibbity toilet lore. Yeah, I don't I don't actively participate much in social media myself, to be completely honest. Other than obviously streaming. But outside of that, it's, it's not like I'm going or, i i lurk a lot i don't really i am an, i am a passive observer in many cases when it comes to other things i just sit there and i'm like what's going on over there okay i'm just gonna sit over here in the corner and chill of course he does it was good until tv men arrived what, did, what does that even mean i mean you've got the fucking you've got the skibbity toilets isn't there like a fucking radio guy or something? And then people with TV heads, are, are they fighting the skibbity toilets? There, is there like a skibbity war? At some point, I'm going to have to like open up that fucking Pandora's box and look up a skibbity t TLDR and then just get brain blasted with the information. That way, at least I have context. Me took a bullet and kept crawling towards Fang. That's hard. He was just so desperate at that point. Snoot was an ongoing nuclear meltdown and Alan was just shoved in so he could see if he could f if he will fix Fang or make everything worse. Yeah, no, it was like the whole the whole story of Snoot's just already on the downhill. And it's, like you said, it's up to Anon to either start pumping the motherfucking brakes or just be like, eh, send it. brought the brain rot i apologize the entire thing is a war how am i to know all i know is that there's a dude who fucking pops his head out of the toilet and goes, that's it that's all i know and then they flush him <laughs> snoot snoot bitty fanglet all right ban that guy same here my bad i actively asked so you know what i don't think people can be apologizing for it <laughs> first thing is i'm not even a furry this is what happens when the only good romance is full of dinosaurs. Hey, man. When people cook, you gotta eat what's cooked, right? If there's a gourmet meal that looks a little different from the ones you usually had, you have to eat that shit up. I mean, it's not like I've really went out there and looked for a bunch of, like, romance viands. Um, explicitly or anything, so... I can't even say... If there is any other good ones. <laughs> I think I'd rather die than look up anything on Skibbity. Yeah, but like your power level kind of increases if you do, you know? Because then you have... Like you're, you, you're an outsider still. You, you, aren't, you aren't a Skibbity head. You get, that, you get that eldritch lore. And you can just bring that up whenever to like cast a spell on someone. Well, they did cook, that's for sure. Rom Dino Romance it is. Yeah, I mean, I said it when uh, we played through all of them. I said fucking Snoot and Wani are both terrific games. Very good. Me, Wani, me, Wani, Dino GF. <laughs> me locking it in after my Tarot GF shoots me in the leg so she doesn't get the ick. Stone face.
You know, I gotta wonder how much does it actually hurt to get shot? Like, I'm not gonna go out there and try it. But part of me is like, yeah, but how bad is it? Like, do some people get shot and they're just like, huh, that's weird. Kind of like when uh, like, a fucking crackhead gets tased and they just stare at you. Like, you just hit him with that dollar store fucking... That dollar store taser. Can we go back to reading? Not to be rude or anything. We're taking a short intermission. Don't worry. We'll get back to chapter four soon. The wing hugs does things for me. Just imagine it. Big old fluffy wings wrapped around you. Imagine how comfortable that would be. It'd be like you're being like rolled up in a pillow. Depends on where. I mean, what? I mean, yeah, adrenaline can be uh, going can numb it. Hurts like any other serious injury. Adrenaline will block some of it, and then it's gonna hurt like shit. Yeah, I mean that tracks. I've never had like a really significant injury. If I try to think about it, I don't think I've ever like broken a bone. I'm like trying to think what what would be the worst injury I've ever sustained myself. Um. I guess it would have had to have been when I knocked my tooth out. That was a bitch. The only other thing than that would be like that when I was a young lad, I was running around with a fucking blanket on my head because, you know, I was a stupid little idiot child. Um, and like I just slammed my face against like the corner of like a coffee table and it like cut into my eyebrow enough that you could see like the bone underneath. My mom was screaming and my dad was like, he's fine. <laughs> She's like, no, we gotta take him to the fucking hospital. And apparently there's still the scar there. But no, the worst one definitely is when I knocked my fucking front tooth out. That sucked. I've told that story on stream before, though. Reminder, it's dino bullets meant to pierce dinosaur skin. Forever crippled. Puts on some sunglasses to hide and moves to a new school. How would, di how would bullets, like, modern day bullets work against, like, a fucking, like, a T-Rex or something? Has anybody done, like, simulations on that? Yeah, but what kind of shit? Bullshit. That kind of shit. So hear me out, fellas. Fang looks like... Looks... Fang looks, but Olivia personality. Okay. Took me a second to, to decrypt that. That could work. That could work. Stop, you're making me want it more than I already do, but it can't actually happen. Dream. You can dream. Drama's what I live for. Drama. What about Mia looks, but Liz personality? <laughs> Mia looks, but Liz personality. Alright. Hold up. Let him cook. If you need a gun to kill Dino, you need Nitro Express. I mean, I think the Monster Hunter death said normal bullets would wreck the monsters. <laughs> you mean to tell me that if I could grab a shotgun with some slugs, I could take down Nerd Gigante? <laughs> Just fucking destroy him? Damn! Yo, we be packing some heat! Haven't played it, but I hear angels. With scaly wings is good. Angels with scaly wings. Okay. I'll have to jot that one down to look up as well. This list is going to get so fucking long. <laughs> okay. Nah, I wouldn't tell you. Of no compromises. And you shouldn't compromise, my friend. Look, I just want my muscle women, okay? There's a, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you, I'm giving you like a, uh, I'm, I'm giving you like a solidarity kind of like uh, movement here. Hell yeah, muscle women. I'll fucking, I'll take it. That shit's good. We be eating good when those, are, when those show up. Mia looks like. Mia looks but Liz personality. I'm about to come. Damn. Alright. Keep keep your snooter in your pants, alright? 
I do like Fang's personality, personally. A little hot-headed, snarky, some tenderness. Like, the thing with Fang is I feel like I could get along with them if I got past the initial phase of, like, getting to know them, but I don't know if I would. It would be one of those situations where, like, I'd have to be in the right situation where their abrasiveness doesn't push me away instantly. If you want another amazing 4chan at the end, I'd say go for Katawa Shoujo. I have played that in the past. Not on stream. That was when I was younger. I did Hanako's route. Though at some point I do want to go back and actually do the other routes. I like that VN. It was great. Angel Scaling Wings is a dragon dating sim. Oh boy. We're going to become their horde. Let's go. Their treasure. Bought Angel Scaling Wings one time for $6. Still haven't gotten around to it. Wait, what does Katawa Shoujo have to do with 4chan? Wasn't it a uh, 4chan? Yeah, 4chan made it. Explains why I liked it. Jesus Christ, I had no idea. Yeah, 4chan cooks. 4chan cooks sometimes. <laughs> Explains so much. Yeah, if I remember correctly, like, one of the ways I got introduced to it was like, hey, do you want to play, like, a fucking dating, like, a, a dating VN about dating crippled girls? That 4chan made, and it's one of those things where you're like, uh, that 4chan made are. Uh, do I want to play it? <laughs> the answer is yes, yes, you do. Gotta bring in that Puppet Anon Riz. Puppet Anon had so much fucking Riz. He was dishing it out in droves. It's absolutely the introduction of the thing. Could easily get along with Olivia. Yeah, that's the thing with Olivia. I feel like she isn't as off-putting outwardly. It's just she's more reserved is all. There, I feel like there would be more situations where you could connect with Olivia than with Fang. At least Fang during, like, well, when you first see Fang in the game. Also be, it was also done during a rougher time for indie game development. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, I'm trying to remember how I had heard about Katawa Shoujo. I think my brother had brought it up because he had watched, like, a playthrough of, like, Chilled Chaos playing it or something. And he wanted me to try and help him because you'd have to torrent it. Because <laughs> you didn't, there wasn't, like, a direct download, I don't think. And I don't think I ever did help him do it, but I ended up doing it myself and playing it. <laughs> Puppet Pals kissing scene. Not just the kid. Dude, there was so much in Puppet Pals that it was just like, boo. Buh. Fortune is an enigma. Like they have highs and lows. I do not go into four chan. I just sit on the sidelines, and when something gets like, like I'm, I'm kind of like a dude just drinking a beer on like a lawn chair out on my yard, and occasionally four chan will kick a ball over to me, and I'll be like, "Huh, what is this?" Pick it up and be like, "Huh, it's a cool ball. <laughs> nice." Just get the Dino Nuggies instantly. Your girlfriend. You think if you think if like Fang, if you were in Volcano High, you didn't know Fang, Fang didn't know you, but you knew that Fang liked Dino Nuggies, and you walked up with a bag of Dino Nuggies, you said you want these. You think that would be instantly like relationship go up, like you instantly shoot up to friend tier. Fortune is Pandora's box. Everything comes out of it, good and bad. Fortune can be an absolute shithole. It can also be the most amazing things, and create the most amazing works. It's like some kind of magic. Also, did you have an NSO baby stuff on yet? Yeah, we had it for both Snoot Game and Wani. Nothing that's going to get me banned, but it was like, oh, what the fuck? Hang on, what you, what you think about over there? Goddamn. 4 is a wild place when YouTube comments uh, said something like, when you were truly anonymous, the only way to prove you were ever there at all is the quality of your work. Yeah, you got to leave your mark somehow. You either leave it as a shit stain on the wall or as a beautiful mural, right? Maybe I'd have a better shot. Got that mutual music thing going on. You know, I have, like, all of my friends had, like, some music thing going on. So maybe, maybe I'd find a way. But, like, it's not like I'm big on the musics. The most I have is my voice. I've never learned to play an instrument. All I've done is just been like, hey, I can sing kind of good. I'm going to go ahead and just, I guess, lean on that a little bit. But I've never used it in any, like, actual context where it matters. Just, like, some fucking... Piss away karaoke type shit. There's also Pokemon Clover for an amazing ROM hack. Uh, 
I don't, I'm trying to like think, like I, I haven't really gotten into like ROM hacks or anything before. I know there's like some really fucking bangers, some really good bangers out there, but uh, I just never played the games that usually get like the ROM hacks. I mean, Snoop game is way wild in the monies. Frank could always show you. And then on Doobie better. Doobie thinking about those Mickey Dodgers. Why is this terror hanging around me? Just got nuggies for lunch. They're just eyeing up your tray and they're like, Oh, I could crush that real good right now. I haven't had nuggies in forever. I can't even recall the last time I had any kind of nuggies. Played trombone for a year. Yeah. Yeah, I never picked up any instruments. I tried to, like, learn guitar for a little bit, and then I was like, oh, my God, this hurts my brain. <laughs> I'm just going to go back to fucking around. You can see an okay, I think. I sing so well, people ask me to stop constantly. <laughs> Sing your truth, brother. <laughs> Let that sonorous voice ring out. Oh, you meant okay, yeah, the, the NSFW on Katala. Katala goes full triple X. Yeah, I had it on for that one. I think there was only one H scene in Hanukkah's route though. I heard there's more in everybody else's route. Mods are low, I think. Might have a shot with Olivia, but it's only slightly higher than Slim, I think. Yeah, I mean, like, I could say all I want about how my shots would go, but at the end of the day, if I'm not looking for it, it's never going to happen. Because that's what happened in school. I just didn't care to get, like, any, like, friendships or relationships or anything, and as such, I didn't get any. I just, I just coasted the fuck through. Kind of like Anon's plan. What about the BBQ sauce? And boom! Instant wife. I'm going to crush those nuggies for lunch now. And that tarot GF later. Wink, wink. So you're still in the fucking school lunchroom. Can you calm down? I mean, did you have mandated learning how to play the recorder? Or was that just me? Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, I did have to like learn the fucking recorder. <laughs> but that's like so far back. I don't even remember it. I was like, honestly, anything before like. Fuck, I want to say anything before, like, seventh grade is kind of a blur, and I just get a couple of, like, nuggets of information. Like, something will surface, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that did happen, didn't it? Currently uh, taking guitar and singing lessons, so it's going good. Oh, nice, nice. If Truck couldn't send you to any world witch. Oh, man. I don't know, man. That's a fucking loaded question. You'd want somewhere where it doesn't fucking blow all the time. Like, you wouldn't want to go to, like, the... You wouldn't want to go to, like, Lordran or something from Dark Souls. That would suck so much ass. Yeah, like, you'd want somewhere where things are cool. Where, where it's different. You don't want to just go to another world where it's like, oh, it's basically just here except a different flavor, right? You'd want, like, something that's like, okay, there's a lot going on here. E2, uh, yeah, Vanfix, uh, E2 reconciliation, uh, post time skip, just like, uh, Chaos said. Right now where we're at, uh, we just, uh, they just kind of like talk things over and on talking terms now. So that's where we're picking up from on, uh, chapter four here. Really? Right in front of my nuggies. If I could, if I could be Istakai to any world. My school, I mostly was part of a single friend group. So friends with like three guys from high school and that's it. One of the my friends basically cut everyone off. Screw him. Yeah, I mean most of my uh most of the friends I talk I've got um I've got one friend that I talk to occasionally from from back in like early like my fourth grade. Um I've got a friend who I chat with every now and again. We don't have the same interests necessarily, so she's just kinda like someone I like hit up every now and again just to kinda see what's going on. Those two are like my oldest friends. And then after that, I've got three, yeah, three core friends from my later elementary years. 
and then uh, one person that I had met more recently. So my my group is very tight knit and uh, not expansive. That's for sure. Chance of any Dino GF and Snoop when I was that age. Then absolute zero nowadays. I'd say I'd have a good odds since I'm not retarded or autistic. That's fair. Pick deserved or preferred. Choose for both if you're interested. Okay. I'll have to think. Like I, I'll you know what? I'll I'll toss that over in my head as I'm reading here when we go through chapter four, and I might have an answer for you by the end of it. Yeah, I have no game if I was in high school, but now with confidence, it's actually an insane amount of apathy, not confidence. Could probably be at least friends with Fang and Olivia. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, most people grow up and become wiser in some sense as they get older. Maybe not in all the aspects they should, but at the very least they pick up on things that they could have done better or they could have done differently. And if given the chance and they walked it back with the information they had, yeah, they could do better for sure. Tried keeping up with folks, but I was always third, fifth wheel. House was an hour away in the opposite direction from school. I'm lucky enough that the uh, the my my uh, three friends from like that I met in eighth grade we still talk pretty consistently, um, and they're on the other side of the fucking country. <laughs> I I, I kind of leaned heavily on the whole uh, online uh, thing, and they they also play games and shit, so it's easy to like at least keep in contact and everything because like there's two things that really make it so that you can remain friends with someone it's either proximity or um similar interests if you have similar interests it's easy to like even at a distance like just chat and talk about something but if you're in proximity at least you can go out and do something even if you're not exactly on the same page about your same passions and everything you can at least go out hang out somewhere and just shoot the shit and that's why, like, when you're in school, it's easier to at least have some kinds of friends. But after school ends and everything, you fall off with certain people because you just don't have those same interests and hobbies as they do. Or those interests and hobbies aren't translatable if you're not within the same uh, relative location. There's a fic I was reading about where Anon was Groundhog day restarting over because he kept getting bad endings. Do it better, Anon. Fucking reset your day. There's something I can relate to Inko with. It was the day friends thing. Hmm. Mm hmm. Men do age like one. The older we get, the better we are. I don't know. I kind of feel like I'm. The more I age, the more I'm starting to get like decrepit. <laughs> like something's gonna. Like two years from now, I'm gonna fall and uh, something's gonna break. I'm gonna be like, oh, well, pff, guess that's gone now. To be fair, I have gotten better physically over the years, which is nice. Like I'm a PG4 question is chill when I deserve. I oh, man, I probably deserve getting shunted into Warhammer 40k. Holy shit. <laughs> that is a uh... wow. Are you good? <laughs> Should drink less milk then. I don't really want to go into that MOP. The colors would give me a headache. Are you afraid of a cutie mark or something, fool? You afraid of having your <laughs> your entire life's work plastered on your ass? <laughs> the more I age, the more I hurt, bro. <laughs> I woke up sore somehow. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I don't know what it was. It, it probably was like food poisoning or something, so it doesn't really correlate with age, but it hasn't happened before. I got up like Saturday after streaming and like it was, I want to say 2 p.m. or something, right? I had a late stream and I got up for a second and I was like, oh, what the fuck is going on? And just a wave of nausea swept over me. I'm like, I got to go to the bathroom and I sat down and it was one of those ones where you start to just lean on something and you start like, you become a little religious for a little bit because you're like, oh my God, what is happening to me? Am I going to make it? And you're just you're like, oh, you, you need any kind of support. So that fucking blew. That's part of the reason I didn't stream on Saturday. Because after that, I went back to sleep and I was like, I don't want to get up. I, I am just wrecked right now.
He lived through five years of seeing all those horrible things. That's the prelude. Damn. G4 MLP. At least you told. At least. At least told you what. Ugh. G4 MLP at least told you what you were good at. And when you got there. Like it would be so much easier as a kid to just know what you're good at. There is some solace in that in there. I don't even know what I'm good at right now. I just know that I'm generally good at a lot of things, but I don't, I don't, I, I'm lucky enough that I don't really feel like I have to have like some true calling, you know, some people like sweat over all the details about what they have to be. I'm just like, I'm just chilling, bro. <laughs> Whatever. As long as I'm paying bills and everything's okay, I'm fine. I don't need to go out there and like try and have a big self-discovery moment. Favorite fact about MLP is that Pinkie Pie canonically has a kid with Pony Weird Al. Alright, guess I'm tucking that one away in the esoteric knowledge. Did they call it Pizza Pie? God damn it. No, Buck. You can't stop feeling achy. Yeah, we're not old enough. <laughs> it, it, like, here's the thing, too. I look at other people. Like, I mean, obviously at this point, I guess I can kind of call myself a content creator. I look at all uh, like other content creators and they're like, I'm like eight like 17 and I'm sitting here and I'm like looking at the clock and I'm like oh my god the bell tolls for me oh no been there you just start to pray to whoever maybe listening promising that you won't eat whatever caused that only to do it again and repeat the cycle uh, shit you not I woke up today as well and I felt like I needed to go to the bathroom and I was like please please don't do it again luckily it was uh, it was just you know getting up and doing your business i was fine but like I, I started to like have like a bit of a cold sweat when i like sweeped out of bed i was like oh fuck i believe they call them pickle imagine naming your kid fucking pickle <laughs> why would you name your kid pickle kid was just called little cheese weird all pony was called cheese sandwich <clears throat> I have not watched MLB. There was a brief stint where I did. I can't recall anything from it though, other than like a couple names. Haven't hit 30 and I'm currently getting surgeries for old people shit. I think nowadays like the younger generations are just fucking aging for some reason. It's it's got to be the it's got to be the microplastics, right? <laughs> It's just taking us down. We, we, we're we forming bottles in our body and our body's like, what? What am we supposed to do with this? This isn't the mitochondria. This isn't the powerhouse of the cell. And then we just start to panic. The body panics and then it's like, okay, I guess you're old now. Guess this is what old's being like. It starts taking you down the road. Actually taking vitamins have helped a bunch. I try to take my vitamins. I know I don't get everything that I need to. Sometimes there the thing with vitamins though is that sometimes I'll just have like bouts of just not feeling like doing anything and then I'll just not take them because I'll be like oh, I didn't take them at the same time that I'm supposed that I usually do guess I'll just skip today and catch up tomorrow and then rinse and repeat until like a week's past and I'm like fuck <laughs> fuck I really need to take that I really need to get on that I actually do need to go get like a checkup it's been like shit a couple of years since I've had a checkup get like some blood work done just make sure I'm on the up and up Here's a lesson for you. Take care of yourself. Healthy body makes healthy mind. Yeah, I mean, generally, like, taking care of your body does help your mental health. I mean, that that seems to be a pretty consistent logic across, like, a lot of people when they're trying to give advice. Like, making sure you're eating decently, at least, that you're trying to work out a little bit. It doesn't even have to be, like, a... You don't have to, like, hardcore diet or, like, go to the gym every single day, but just doing something every now and again and eating something decent every now and again definitely helps with the old mood. I mean, when I went on um, vacation a couple weeks back um, with my parents, I was eating good meals every day, good hot meals every day, and it was like, oh man, <laughs> oh, this is so nice. <laughs> Juice pie also counts for pizza in my book. Cheese pie. I actually haven't eaten any pies. Watch G4 to season 5, then get back into it last year for some reason. Or the chems, we altered food to grow faster, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. 
it's funny that we have to say like these are organic apples and like you have to do like a double take and you're like what i thought all apples were organic <laughs> huh it's like no 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 these ones are the organic ones that we raised organically it's like what but but apple is apple <laughs> Uh, companies are unfortunately incentivized to not care about the consumers because caring about the consumers cuts into profits smile without going into big politics <laughs> dropped out of the runs uh, season 5 magnesium is the big one You're stiff as hell take this now that's, that's kind of funny that the human body works that way right just something's wrong and they're like, nah, you just need more of this. And then you take that and you're like, what? How did that work? Yeah, your body just needed it. Huh. Weird. I recall the DBZ kind of finale for S4. Yeah, S4 finale, finale was just DBZ. Tell when the animation team got new effects and wanted to test them out. Oh, yeah, so homemade meals. One more reason to cook for yourself. Yeah, I mean, like, I resort to, like... Um, I resort to, like, for lunch, usually, like, just something really quick. Like, a totino. Sometimes I'll just have, like, an apple and some peanut butter toast. But, like, uh, every other day, me and my brother will at least cook something. We'll even make, like, some pasta, like, cook some chicken or something. Just in-house. I mean, like, it's nothing fancy, right? We, we just got some, like, frozen chicken. Got, like, a box of, like, pasta roni or some shit. But we throw it all together and, like, put some seasoning on the chicken. I mean, it's nice. It, it helps. If I if I was eating frozen meals every meal for every day, that'd probably make me a little crazy. I probably would get not be not too happy with that. GMO food isn't bad for you. We made them to be better. Make the superfood now. No, there's also people that would be like, if you can give me the nutrient brick TM that I just eat it and I get all of my stuff for the day, I'll take that. <laughs> Don't give me any meals. I just want the nutrient bricks now. Let me let me line them up and, uh, like against the wall. Organic's just buzzword these days. Basically, it good thing we swear kind of advertising on the package. Gotta love advertising. Gotta, gotta just fucking love it. And like the obfuscation of like what actually is in what you're using. Buzzwords, just my favorite. Triple A or quit, what is it for when we're talking about games now? What was the big one? Quadruple A is a big thing now, or like that was used with like uh, skull and bones or whatever. And it's like you're just saying nothing. What you just said is nothing. <laughs> Not joking. You can watch Tyrek and Twilight fight right now. It's just DBZ. Apparently, body will subtly make you crave foods that have the nutrients you need. I must need a lot of fucking sodium then, because I, I I always crave like a nice pretzel. I've got here, you can probably hear it. I always got like a bag of like some rolled gold stick pretzels near me. Those are those are my like I just I just eat some salt and like shoot the salt off the pretzels and I'm good to go, baby. Can you give mine that patch up there, please? <laughs> Literally made all the grown shit better by uh, genetically breeding it. We did dogs and we did all our vegetables. We love playing God. <laughs> we, we love saying, hmm, this is good. But what if it were better? It's a good thing. Yeah, I'm not one of those people who's like immediately like, oh, you modified the food? Fucking straight to the garbage. But I would like to know what goes all in the food and if I should be concerned about anything. But people don't tend to want to tell you if you should be concerned to eat their food because they think that the first thing that comes to their mind is, well, if we tell them that, they're not going to want to eat our food. <laughs> to be fair, we overdid it with some dog breeds. Poor German Shepherds. You got those, like, what, what is it? The pugs that are just sitting there like... <laughs> like their pain, their existence is just pain. Nutrient brick with insert flavor would be so good. A nutrient brick would be nice for when you just don't have fucking time or like the will to do any cooking. Because, you know, depression's a thing and just lack of like enthusiasm in doing anything. And like at least making sure you could eat then would be a bad idea with a nutrient brick. <sighs> had, to, had to articulate a scream in the chat, of course. 
Pugs are suffering. Imagine you were born, but you were a pug. GTA 6 is probably the only game to call itself quadruple A. Cost over a billion dollars. Does the A just mean they spent more money on it? Because, like, I'm going to be honest, I don't give a fuck how much money you spent on a game making it. If the game's shit, it's going to be shit. If the game's good, it's going to be good. I got crave chocolate all the time because it has magnesium. Once I started taking magnesium, guess what I stopped craving? Substitute the chocolate with the magnesium pill. And it works. It works wonders. Now we're slowly shifting back to some dog breeds to be healthier. Good. <laughs> As we should. It's impressive how many things we improved and ruined. We are unironically gods. We shape all the... I mean, yeah, no, obviously. I mean, we... I think a proper term for the human race is world shapers. Because... I, I mean, like, sometimes I think about that, right? Like, I was walking last night in my apartment through the garage to go get my mail, right? I had gotten a package or something, needed to go get it. And I kind of just, like, looked around in the garage, and I'm like, it's fucking wild. I'm looking around right now. There are cars lined up all the way up here. How much work did it take to make those cars? How much material did we need? What required us? To, what was required to be able to mass produce all of that material to make these cars? Look at the structure I'm in. It's a big concrete like fucking tower that houses people. It's got air conditioning. It's got electricity. It's got like fire suppression systems if something goes wrong. And, and like you look around and it's like this is just like this is kind of crazy. This isn't just like nature. This isn't something that just naturally exists. We put all this shit in here. This is a little wild. But you just kind of get used to it because you see it so often. I don't know. Sometimes it's those moments of clarity that I'm like, what the fuck? Yo, we kind of popped off. <laughs> MREs are basically nutrient bricks in a way. <laughs> MREs, yummy. My only exposure to MREs are watching like those fucking ASMR eating MRE videos or like the MRE taste test videos <laughs> where they're either like, you know, that wasn't shit. That actually tasted kind of interesting or that is the worst thing ever. I feel bad for the troops. <laughs> yeah, they is the cost, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like games have way too much money spent on them nowadays. And because of as a result, they uh, lean way too heavily on like things like microtransactions to make up the costs. When in reality, they should be working on making a game for cheaper and doing it more efficiently. <laughs> Just my two thoughts. My two cents, if you will. Working out, you no longer eat chicken and rice. You eat nutrient bread, TM. If you want to get your fucking nutrients so you can get swole and pick up all the bitches, you need Nutrient Brick TM right now. We've got protein flavor, milk flavor, chicken flavor. A's are marketing. It's used for the... It used to be for the size of the studio, roughly. Single A was basically indie devs. Double A are basically funded by big studios, but kind of do their own thing. Triple A are big pubs. Yeah, I mean, like, I only ever heard... Like, when it came to that... At the very least, even if that's the initial or that was the original intention, at least as a consumer, the only thing I ever really heard was either indie or AAA. There wasn't, I, I never really heard anything other than maybe like in passing speaking about like a very specific studio. Ever hear anything relating like AA? Never heard anything relate, like never heard uh, indie devs uh, referred to as single A. The what now? I'm immediately leaving this stream. To watch eating MREs ASMR video. <laughs> it's a wide, wide world out there, you see. Future Games wants the indie and passion, but uh, professional game companies pump garbage. Absolutely. I think, uh, I, I feel like there's been a, um, a shift in like people's perception of it, especially. And I think that's because um, like people who grew up with games are now old enough to realize when something is shit. Like, and realize that there's no soul behind a game. And they can, like, they can feel that. Especially since, it, it helps that uh, we do live in an age now where an indie dev can thrive. They can easily get their game up somewhere and you can play it without having to, like, go to GameStop and, like, search for it or something, right? You, you can just go to Steam, pick up a game and try it out. And, like, you can feel when a dev actually cares about their game because... They put the work into it. They put the soul into it. It's not just supposed to be a product. It's supposed to be a artistic 
creative process, you know? And it, it shows as a result. And it's not to say that a AAA studio can't do it. I mean, like, you have games like fucking Red Dead 2. Really great game. I love that fucking game. But it's it's those are the far and few between experiences. You just get more pump and dumps nowadays where they just get something out there and then try to nickel and dime you best they can. GTA 6 development is uh, funded the entirety of the UK. Goodness. Looks at phone teary-eyed. Took so much to make you my little son. I mean, you think about it, right? Like, it's not, it is one of those things where you're just like, wow, I just have a computer right here, huh? That I can just open up. I could call somebody. I could text them. I could use the internet. I could, I could go play Subway Surfer. It's ridiculous. I mean, Capcom, Capcom somehow made, came back around to being the best game company after some real low years. But I think they will be the only one to do so. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong. I'm all for, like, uh, a company actually coming back around and improving. I mean, I remember... I remember before Resident Evil 7 came out. And obviously Resident Evil had kind of went down the fucking gutter. Uh, 6 blew really bad. People had complaints about 5, but I generally enjoyed it. But after six, I was just like, eh, whatever. And that's that's only on like the Resident Evil side of things, right? Like Capcom obviously had other games, but and, you know. But then <laughs> I remember discussing it with one of my friends, uh, Resident Evil Seven, and he was like, they they had showed that it was gonna be first person. He's like, ah, that's gonna that's just that's gonna kill the franchise. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. Let him cook. Resident Evil Seven comes out, huge seller, great game, completely reinvigorates the whole Resident Evil franchise. And then Capcom also did uh, Monster Hunter World, didn't they? Or am I thinking of a, uh, the wrong place? And th that popped the fuck off. I was late to that one, unfortunately. But I did come around and play Monster Hunter World. And I love the fuck out of that game. It's great. I'm looking forward to Monster Hunter Wilds. I, I skipped out on Sunbreak. Or not Sunbreak. Um, Sunbreak's the DLC. What? Monster Hunter Rise, I think it is. I skipped out on that one simply because... Um, it came out like on switch first and I just didn't really, I don't know, feel incentivized to do it when it came out on PC, but yeah, when wilds comes out, I'm playing the fuck out of that. I'll tell you what, play GTA six for a hundred dollars or play Terra GF simulator for three. That's another thing. The fact that games are going up in price at the base level is, I don't know, like fucking, I'm going to scrutinize the fuck out of a $70 game compared to a $60 game. I'll be a hundred percent real with you. Remember you were saying you had a Deltarune phase? Who's your favorite character? Susie. <laughs> Do you really need to... Uh, you, you probably could have, like, guessed that one. I think Susie's a great character. Game made with passion in indie. Like, goodbye, Volcano High. Didn't Capcom screw up modding uh, compatibility for old single-player games recently? I think I think they did something with the modding, but I, I remember it, was, it seemed... I, I didn't look into it too much, but it seemed like it was kind of more of a situation of some people were drumming it up to be bigger than it really was. Um, and as a result, you know, meh. like it didn't actually do as much as some people were saying. It was kind of just like what, like didn't some announcer at like a tournament have like naked Chun Li or something. And he was like, whoa, 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 whoopsies. And then obviously Capcom had to do something about it. I don't know. I, I feel like I watched like a um, Max Mofo video about it or something. and Or not Max Mofo. Is it Max Million, dude? I think it's Max Million, dude. The, the, fight, the big fighting game uh, content creator. And he was talking about it and was saying it's not as big a deal as people are making it out to be. Uh, Arthur Morgan, best protagonist. Arthur Morgan is a terrific antagonist. Antagonist? Protagonist. Um... Really, it's it's astonishing that they somehow uh, one-upped John Marston from the first game. I love the fuck out of uh, Morgan. He's great. Only played RE5 and 6, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> oh, man. Only having played those games, that's definitely an experience to the series. I started with 4 myself, personally. But, um... I... I a short while back, I actually went back and played like the remakes when they started to come out. So I've gone through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've gone through all the mainline games. I, 
haven't done Resident Evil 6 on stream yet. I did 5 on stream, but 6, I, I feel like that's going to have to be one of those ones where I have a stiff drink next to me <laughs> when I'm playing that. Because I have some... Playing that game on the hardest difficulty was a fucking nightmare because it just... There was a lot of bad decisions. Cast the capitalism spell. Companies will produce good product or die. I wish we had that spell. That'd be great. I cast iron. Throws pan at you. I missed World but, Ri but got Rise per GU personally. I never got to play GU. I heard it's good though. I, th like there's a lot of older Monster Hunters that I would like to check out at some point. But it's one of those things where I just have like such a big list of backlog. I don't know if I'll ever get to it. Dragon's Dogma 2 on Friday. God, I'm so excited. Cash pocket sand. Pocket stand. To be fair, games haven't been adjusting to inflation for like 30 years. Capcom backpedal DRM to some games, which is an asshole thing to do, yeah. This is why, yeah, like fucking Gunnar at the world stage isn't a good luck. So you think Anon is just a great sword only kind of guy in Monster Hunter? Well, if he's a great sword only kind of guy in Monster Hunter, I guess I'm Anon because that's all I used in Monster Hunter. <laughs> I just like swing big stick and big damage come out. Make me happy. And I mean, sure, like games haven't been adjusting to inflation and everything, but it feels like some games are asking for $70 now while also decreasing in quality. You know what I mean? So, of course it was Susie. Why wouldn't it be? She's the best written character after all. If you don't like Susie, I, won't, I don't fuck with you, all right? <laughs> Susie's a great character, all right? Even if they're not your favorite character, you can't tell me that Susie's not a well-written character. Come on. It's chef's kiss baby gotta go into re6 as a comedy game yeah like if i did re6 i sure shit would not be playing that shit alone i'd be playing it with like a friend and we would just be mocking it the whole time that would be one of those streams where i actually go hoarse because i'd be shouting the whole time like are you fucking kidding me really that would be the whole fucking stream <laughs> up there with gerald of rivia i do need i i, ha I actually haven't played the witcher games um I do need to go and play those because at least Witcher 3. I heard people love Witcher 3 and that it's very well respected. Same with like the, uh, like at least Mass Effect 1 and 2. I never played those either. You refer to it as cheating? No, which is out of touch for sure. There's also the Mountain of MTX for Rise. Oh, is there a lot of microtransactions for Rise? I, I mean, I hadn't looked into Rise as much. I, I, I've seen, like, a couple of images of, like, the uh, the gameplay and, like, the, the monsters in it, but I never really took big looks in there. GU's the last of the old school, old school style. Nearly 100 big monsters. More things to skin and wear. My favorite. Charge Blade all the way. <clears throat> my brother played, um, I think he was, like, Dual Blade and Insect Glaive. I think he also dabbled a bit in longsword, but I just always did fucking great sword because I just, I love positioning myself and then getting that TCS off. That shit feels, oh, you see that, you see that crit tenderized thousand damage and you're like, that's so good. If I had to play a different one, I'd probably just play bonk hammer. That, that probably would still be fine. I mean, like skull and bones isn't a $70 game. Absolutely not. I liked the thing I liked with Skull and Bones is that for a while, or like when they were doing the beta, people were like, uh, eh? and like when you're doing a beta and everything and trying to hype up the game, and that's what people have to say, oh, <laughs> that's not gonna be good. Me like big damage, me tail cut first combo. I just love me some great sword action, baby. I think we have been officially chatting for longer than you reading as of now. I think you might be right. I think I might need to pump the brakes here and actually continue the chatting. We are three. I think I just chatted for an hour. Holy shit. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done that. God damn. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get caught up here and then we'll start going and uh, get the reading back on track. <laughs> Which one is being remade? Oh, no shit. Okay. Huh, maybe that'll be what pushes me to actually uh, pick up Witcher then cosmetic but there's a good few i remember in fucking world the cosmetics are just you go earn it and then like i got the buff guy like 
torso and like the 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 long scarf and that felt badass but you just had to go beat the fuck out of the big monkey a couple times to get the buff thing that's on Susie and Noel liked it until the prequel story where Noel sees does he bully Chris which was taken very seriously until Noel goes god I wish that was me um I think that I think that that's fine, like the Noel and Susie thing. I don't. I, I feel like it's got a ways to go before I'm really on board with it, though, because it kind of feels more one-sided right now. And like Susie's still just trying to make friends and everything. And Noel's like, "I want to be stepped on. I want her to crush me." And it's like, mm, pump the brakes a little bit. We're still trying to get Susie out of her shell first. Charge makes me feel like a cool anime man. I think I played uh, a little bit of like uh, what, what was it? Like the the fucking axe or whatever the. the the axe the charge axe. i don't remember what it's called i tried it out a little bit and it was like oh, it's very switch axe that's what it's called like switch axe personally yeah i tried it a little bit and i was like this is pretty cool not to be rude or anything come back and stuff so. no it's not rude i mean this is supposed to be a reading stream i just ended up getting carried away and talking for a while we'll be getting back on in here been an hour only have played one try a little i want to see i want to make a heavy bow gun set though I can never get into the ranged ones, real chat hours. Please put timestamps so I can rewatch this later. Oh yeah, no, don't worry. I'll I'll have the timestamps on the on the VOD for where, when we start each chapter. Um When it comes to these types of stuff, I like to at least keep that marked. Like when I'm playing like something like Voice of the Void, I, I'm not gonna really be able to like mark that one too well. But like with Snoot Game and um, with reading here, it's pretty easy to go in there and be like, oh, we started this chapter here, we started this chapter here, there was a long segment here where I did nothing. Boom boom bomb. I feel like the cause of every derail and snoot streams happened with the uh, mods happened here. Wait, reading? All right, look, we have a bunch of stuff here. Isn't that cool? I'm per I'm perfectly fine with derailing for a little bit. Like I said, if I wanted to just be sitting here reading the whole time, I would have just recorded this. I wouldn't be streaming it, right? Part of the whole thing about streams is you, like there's supposed to be some back and forth with chat, actual interaction. Otherwise, you you would be better off just having like a pre-recorded format. So. Taking some derailments is a, isn't a big deal. Isn't a big deal for a little bit. Look, <laughs> look. <laughs> the streamer does what the streamer does. And my issue with Susie hooking up right now is that she just got into friendship stuff. Yeah, I like the soft moments between like Susie and Chris that can happen, where it's like, okay, these two are. Like, Chris is, like, more of a shut-off kind of person. Like, yeah, they have history and everything. But, like, with Chris, there's the whole thing, too, with, like, what is going on with the soul and everything, and who is Chris really? But at the very least, there seems to be, like, the desire to be friends with Susie and everything, and you get some really nice moments. Like, there's the, uh, I think there's the moment that'll happen after Spamton's fight, where Susie will be, like, worried for Chris, and, <laughs> like, it's just nice. It makes me happy. You have good chat. You have uh, chat engagement. That's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it, I, I would I would rather be able to sit here and talk with chat for a little bit because I've talked with Jeremy about it before, and I've said uh, to him, um, when it comes to streaming, it's very hard to be entertaining or have like a good stream if you don't have a chat that you can talk with. So if I can foster that kind of chat, one where we can go back and forth, we can talk about different things. I feel like that overall is just going to improve the streams way better than if I just sat here and just stared at the screen and didn't take one peek over at the chat. We do a bit of yapping as a treat. I guess it's triple possession, us, Chris, and the knight. Yeah, there's tons of theories on all that. There's tons and tons of theories. <clears throat> All right, well, I think I finally caught up on chat. Ugh. Let me get a sip of water here, because despite not reading, I have been talking for a fucking hour. So I'm going to go ahead and take a sip. We'll go ahead and start chapter four. I think we'll try, we're three hour 12 in. I think we'll at least get through chapter five tonight. A far cry from the 10 we were shooting for. But like I said, we're trying to feel out how these types of streams need to go. So we, we're going to have to play around with it, figure out kind of what we need to do when we need to pump the brakes on the chatting and keep uh, reading. Again, though, we're all here to have some fun, listen to some nice story, and, you know, just talk about, shoot the shit. So, nothing wrong with all that, is there? Add on, you little sponge. You need more Cromer, or you will get ending one! God. 
I hate that little man. I love Java way more than fucking Spamton. All right, I'm going to throw that hot take out there before I start. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. Simmer on that for a minute. <laughs> All right. Continuing on with Broken Wings, Chapter 4. Catching up. <clears throat> it's Saturday. The first Saturday in a long time that I feel like I have something to look forward to. I know it isn't like I've had all the damage erased due to one chance meeting in the night, but it's the first time in four years that I wake up with a hint of a smile on my snout. As I stare out my window, the sun seems welcoming instead of oppressive, my disheveled blinds failing at their jobs as usual as the rays shine around my apartment. It's been so long since I've felt like this, and it warms my heart in ways I've long since missed. I'd lounge for a while, taking the warmth of the sun. I stretch my arms and legs before leaning up, taking some time to stretch my wings. I throw the blanket off me and pull my wings up to my eyes, like grimace, seeing the sorry state I've left them in for so long. A pale white reflection of four years I've spent lost in bitter. I suppose I'll give them a chance of their own to recover. No more bored plucking from me. I hear my phone rumble on the table and I reach over to pick it up. Text from Anon pops up on the screen as I unlock it. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Anon. What are you up to? Not much. I was thinking. Do you want to meet up at the bistro at the edge of Skin Row today? It's a little nicer looking and safer than a lot of the places in this nightmare. My treat, of course. Sure, that sounds great. It would be nice to have something other than fucking pizza for once. When do you want to meet up? How about in an hour? Alright, I'll meet you there. Sweet. Later, Fang. Bye, Anna. With that, I set my phone back on the table. The small smile lingers on my lips. An actual smile, rather than one I put on to just keep people from asking too many fucking questions. I know we're both hurting, and it'll be a while before the wounds heal, but it's nice to have someone to talk to. Someone who knows me. The only person in my life that I ever opened up to. Something I used to think was the worst mistake I ever made. But perhaps it doesn't have to be. Everyone deserves a second chance, after all. Even Nanon and even me. I get up from the couch before stumbling over onto the floor. Fuck. Still weak. One night of binging pizza isn't going to make up for months of neglect. Pushing myself up off the floor, I brush myself off as a pizza crust falls from my shirt. Fucking hell. I really need to clean up this place. Not that I expect to have company over, but I don't need to live in fucking squalor either. I'll take care of that later. For now, I've got a meet uh, I've got a meetup to get ready for. Grabbing a fresh set of clothes from the clean pile on my floor. Get a dresser, damn it. Stop living like a hobo. I make my way into my shower. Tossing my clothes aside, I turn on the water. Still as tepid as ever, but it feels nice. As the water pours over the top of my head, I run my hands across the top of my stubble. I guess maybe I can let it grow out a bit. Maybe. Don't need to get ahead of myself. No idea how this all will go. I want to believe that he's changed, that he's grown up since we last met. But I have to be careful. I won't survive another like, night like the one at the beach so long ago. After a quick soaping and rinsing off, I fling open the curtain and step out. Drying off, I put the towel on the rack for once, tossing on my clothes and putting on my makeup. My sight lingers on my old makeup for a while, but no, not yet. Walking over to the table, I snap up my phone and check the time. 10.30. I have an hour to get down there, so I put my boots on and head out. He, at least, has picked a nice place to go. The beast on the very edge of skin wrote, so it's actually maintained. <laughs> The bistro is on the very edge of Skin Row, so it's actually maintained. Nobody from the depths of this shithole goes that far out since the police regularly patrol there. Making my way to the street, I light up a cigarette, taking a deep inhale and puffing out a couple of smoke rings. After years of practice, I can make all sorts of shapes now. I even shot an arrow through one. The depressing sights of the streets not getting to me. I walk with a spring in my step. I even put a small clump of bills in the hand of a desperate looking fellow. I wasn't buying, so I wanted to pay it forward. Maybe brighten the day of another sad sob here. The name of the bistro, on a sign that actually has all the letters accounted for, comes into view. Amy's place. It's a comfy looking spot in this sea of refuse. Polished windows and outside well-maintained tables dotted the uncracked pavement. French-style doors and decor. 
A little out of place in Skin Row, but it feels exotic enough for me to pretend like I've left this whole place entirely. If only for a moment. I flick my cigarette butt into the street before checking the time. Ten minutes until Anon said he'll be here. Guess I can get us a table, provided they don't try to throw me out thinking I'm some crack-addicted tarot. I gently push open the doors, looking as proper as I can with how skeletal I still am. The jingle of the bells prompts the waitress at the front to glance over. She gives me a look before shifting to a plastic smile. Probably has dealt with all kinds of garbage that rolls out of skin row. She's a short orange stegosaurus with blue eyes. She reminds me of Stella. If Stella had been knocked down a foot and with way smaller plates on her back. She holds a menu in her, hand, in her arms and continues to smile at me. Welcome to Amy's place. Would you like a table inside or out? She stands on her tiptoes looking over the top of her podium. I look at the list of specials scrawled on the board on the front of the podium before looking up at her. Inside, please. I have someone coming to meet me in a little bit. He won't be long. Of course. we got a comfy booth right over here. Follow me. With that, she beckons me over as I follow, talking in the, uh, taking in the view of the inside. The lamps are bright, very different from the lights of the pizzeria that can hardly illuminate the tables they're over. All the chairs are sawed with cushions on the top and... The booths don't have any claw marks or questionable stains on them. It's definitely a far cry from what I've grown used to, and I like it. Here you go! Her voice snaps me out of drifting thoughts as she gestures to the booth. I slide in and take a seat as she sets a menu in front of me. Did you want to order now, or wait for your friend? I'd like to wait. He's paying. I'd hate to rack up the bill before he even shows up. Okay, and what does he look like? I shrug. He's human, probably going to be wearing a black beanie and sweatshirt, about the most nondescript face you've ever seen, so you'll recognize him straight away. All right, I'll let him know. I'll let you be then till he arrives. She nods to me before turning around in place and going back to her station. It's, uh, it is nice to be waited on for once. Normally the fanciest I get is when the top shelf BBQ sauce is on sale and I splurge on the expensive nuggets. One's made with chicken instead of chicken. I lounge in the seat with a con content groan. The booth feels like heaven compared to my couch that I'm sure is trying to fucking kill me. I need to rip that goddamn spring out before it puts any new holes in my ass. As I sit there, a small spike of panic hits me. What if he doesn't show up? What if I'm getting my hopes up again and I'll be sitting here all alone looking like a weirdo before eventually giving up and going home? I shake the thoughts from my head. No can't go shutting down, throwing myself back into my misery. He'll be here. I flip through my phone for a bit, checking local news stories. Surprise, surprise, someone else got murdered overnight. Sucks to think that the only thing keeping me safe is a heavy metal door and three locks. One night on the streets is all it'd take, and I'd be toast. I hear the door jingle again, and I glance over. It's Anon, looking the same as always. Funny to think that out here he actually sticks out with his blank face. Nobody in Skin Row looks like him. The waitress leads him over to my table, and he takes a seat across from me. The bags under his eyes have lightened up a bit, so I guess he got a good night's sleep for once, too. After a small, awkward silence, he sets down his menu and clears his throat. <coughs> nice place, huh? I nod, putting my hands on the table. Far nicer than anywhere I've been in ages. No graffiti on the walls, and the tables don't shake. I kick the underside of the table as an example, and it doesn't budge an inch. He looks nervous, chuckling and rubbing the back of his head. I stare at the dweeb for a bit before smiling. I'm not gonna bite you, Anon. Get comfy. Relax. He takes a deep breath before slowly exhaling. <sighs> Sorry, Fang. I haven't really been around anyone for ages. Not since I got back from the Navy, and even then, I was avoiding everyone I could in that steel tomb. I raise an eyebrow at him with a smirk. <laughs> so that's where you ended up, huh? Let me be honest, never really saw you as the Navy type, or any military for that matter. Your greatest army, your greatest enemy being a set of stairs. He laughs, shaking his head. Yeah, inanimate objects seem to always get the better of my dumbass. But yeah, I joined the Navy for a bit before dropping out. At least it was going to be up soon, and I had zero college prospects. I ended up stuck on a ship with a pile of people I wanted nothing to do with, and nothing but salt and steel for miles around. Sorry to hear that. It doesn't sound like anything even slightly fucking fun. 
Still, you're alive, at least. <laughs> no one blew you up at sea. Not for lack of trying, he says as he crosses his arms over his chest. A few times some fucker would try to sink us, and it'd be hell on earth dodging bits of metal and shells. Still, never killed me, obviously. <laughs> well, duh. I roll my eyes playfully with a smirk. Unless you are the most talkative corpse I had ever run into. You've run into talking corpses? I stared at him in disbelief for a moment. No. Dweeb. Of course I fucking haven't. Plenty of real ones, though. Learn to stay away from the alleys, even if the walk could be shorter. He sighs before leaning over the table. Sorry. Sorry. I forgot you've been here a lot longer than me. So, what have you been up to these past four years? I frown, looking down at my hands, wringing them together. Nothing good. Left home with barely a word. Don't talk to my parents outside of telling them I'm not dead. Nazar being my only family I really talk to. I spent four years here in the shitty corner of Volcadera, playing in that pizzeria, getting nowhere and making just enough to stay alive. It hasn't been a good life for me, Anon. His face sinks in sorrow as he reaches across the table to put a hand on mine. I'm sorry, Fang. When I saw you in that place, I thought maybe there was a chance you were living something of your dream to be a rock star, but after hearing your last song... I sniffle and swipe a tear with my shoulder, chuckling weakly. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just been me and my small band playing for the tiny, desperate crowds of people. No one really ever paid attention to us. Or even worse, would leave when we started playing. I won't lie to you, Anon. It wouldn't be a good place to start, but last night when you found me on that beach, I wasn't planning on going home. I was just going to wait until someone knifed me in from my base and, well, I look away, ashamed of admitting I was going to kill myself one way or another that night. He frowns before flipping over one wrist to show me the scars. I'm not going to judge you for shit, Fang. I'd given it a few tries myself, always chickening out at the last second before getting deep enough. But that doesn't matter. Nothing does, except going forward as we are now. Gotta be something to look forward to, right? I turn his hand back over before giving him a squeeze. Right. I mean, we hit rock bottom, so we can't get much lower. Nowhere to go but up. I smile as I point at the ceiling, and I'm letting out a chuckle. I have to ask, though, why aren't you still in the Navy? I would think you would have just stayed. Gotta pay better than anything out here. He fidgets a bit before looking me in the eyes. <laughs> Promise not to laugh. I cock an eyebrow before nodding. <laughs> okay. Sure, I won't laugh. He rubs the back of his head, looking about as embarrassed as he could. I, uh... I fell off a ladder and busted my coccyx. It was going to be a long recovery they didn't want to wait for, so I got discharged with a pension and never looked back. I take a deep breath, preventing my laughter from escaping. You... you fell off a ladder and busted your ass. He nods. Yeah, that's about as apt a description of my stupidity that could be put on it. I clamp my beak shut as I feel the rumbles of laughter and giggle fits slowly overwhelming me, and he sighs. <sighs> Just let it out, Fang. You're gonna explode if you don't. Not a second later, I break out into loud guffaws, bashing my fists into the table as my eyes water up. I must look like I'm losing my mind as I throw my head back in laughter, gripping my sides as my face begins to sting from the strain. A couple minutes later, I recover and I suck in a gulp of air before I black out. I'm sorry, Anna. I'm sorry, but that is just the funniest fucking thing I've heard in who knows how long. He waves it off with a smile. Yeah, it's alright. It's worth getting laughed at to see you look happy again. My eyes snap open wide, and a small hint of peaks, pink spreads across my snout before I look away. Sh shut up, dweeb. I haven't had a reason to laugh in ages, so I had a lot stored up. I'm used to being the butt of jokes. It's my specialty. That and falling down stairs, ladders, and being regularly defeated by gravity and my own dumbassery. I sigh as I flick away a happy tear from my eyes. 
Still, the same man on from so long ago. <laughs> Maybe a bit buffer. But still as coordinated as someone having a stroke. Though we better order something before they throw our asses out. Fuck, sure. You got a point? Whatever you want, Fang. It's all on me. You might regret that. I can deal with a few less smokes this week. I peruse the menu and see a veritable feast of options in front of me. Crepes piled high with whipped cream. Eclairs with all sorts of fillings. Piles upon piles of breakfast options. And sugary confectionaries to obliterate me into the deepest sugar coma I could ever be in. Resisting the urge to order the whole menu, I settle on a stack of crepes and a large coffee. I haven't had coffee that didn't taste like burnt ass in so long. Can't wait to have something with a pleasant flavor. Didn't take long before they slide our food out to us, and on having ordered a stack of pancakes and a hot chocolate. Exercising some self-control, I take a knife and fork and start eating like a regular person instead of a ravenous beast. As the first bite hits my tongue, my people shrink as the flavor overwhelms my senses. After years of cardboard pizza, cigarettes, and booze, this is the first thing I've had with actual taste. I'm in heaven, and I let out a low, shuddering moan as I savor the flavor. Anon is chewing away at half a pancake he shoved in his mouth before snickering at me. <laughs> that good, huh? I take another bite before nodding enthusiastically, not caring how embarrassing the sound I just made is. It's fucking delicious. Haven't had real food in who knows how long. Take your time and enjoy it, then. In no rush. Not like we've got anywhere else to be. True enough. I cut a larger piece off and stuff it in my mouth. Piece by piece, the first crepe evaporates into my waiting maw. I take a sip of my coffee, sending electricity surging through my veins. Is everything here made of pure heaven, or am I just so used to mediocrity that standard fare has become the finest of meals? I suppose so. Not that I'm complaining. Setting my utensil aside for a moment, I glance over at Anon. So, you got any dreams yourself these days, or just skating by on your pension the current plan? He shrugs, swallowing down his bite before answering. <clears throat> I mean, it gives me enough to live on without worry for the most part. Not that I can afford any luxuries on the pittance they pay, but it keeps me fed and at home. As for plans, not many. At least, not yet. I've only been back for a little while. My whole plan so far was hanging out watching you every night, trying not to look like a fucking creeper at the same time. I smirk at him. I mean, you didn't look like a total creeper, but I will say I did wonder if you were just some guy who was going to murder me on my way home. Nobody in Skin Row is really anyone I'd want to hang out with. Well, except you now, of course. Of course. At first, I kind of wanted to melt into the background. Hide at home like I always did, playing my video and watching shit movies. When I saw you in the pizzeria, I, wa I wanted to walk away. Pretend like I got what I wanted out of life and needed nothing else. But something kept me there. I couldn't just leave. I reach out, giving his hand a squeeze. And I'm glad you didn't. It was nice to have someone in the audience that looked like they wanted to be there. Far different from the normal, casual disregard we get. He blushes again before turning his head to the side. G glad to do it, Fang. I'll still be there every night. <laughs> you damn well better be. Talking to me again doesn't mean you get to slack off now. On that note, why did it take you so long to come up to me, anyway? He shrugs. I didn't think I had any right to, but after I watched you wasting away... And then with that last song you sang, I knew I couldn't just sit there and do nothing. I had to say something before... Before it was too late for the both of us. <laughs> yeah, I must look a sight. Scale and bones and barely a feather to my name. His mouth barely moves as he stares in my eyes. She's still the same beautiful fang to me. Oh, it's mumbling. Okay. I blink at him in shock before speaking. Uh, Anon, you still mumble. His face turns beet red as he hides his bill inside his sweatshirt. Oh, son of a fucking bitch. I thought I had a handle on that. I laugh at the dork, my hand resting on my cheek. I'm good to see some th that some things never change, dweeb. 
Well, thank you for the compliment, even if you meant to keep that inside. You're, uh, you're welcome. Goddamn bumble. He stabs another piece of pancake, ramming it into his mouth to stifle any further mishaps. I chuckle at him before finishing off the rest of my plate, the last heavenly scraps fading into the void of my stomach. The, la the first real meal I've had in so long. And some fun conversation. More than I could have hoped for even a week ago. He pays the bill, and we take our drinks outside as he walks me home. Skin Row is a lot less scary when you aren't alone, especially with someone who can probably snap a brick in two with his bare hands. As we reach my apartment, we turn toward each other, awkwardly shifting in place. Well, I had a wonderful time, Anon. Thank you for treating me to breakfast. <laughs> Best meal I've had in ages. He rubs his hands together, looking unsure of himself as he kicks a rock down the alley. Not a problem, Fang. Glad to do it. Got a lot of making up to do, and breakfast is the least I could do. That you can. Or that you do. I'll catch you later, Anon. Don't get shanked on the way home. No one would mess with me these days, anyway. See you later, Fang. We stand there, looking at each other for a minute before I break the awkwardness, giving him a hug, which he returns with a happy sigh. Breaking off, I wave to him. He waves back watching me walk up the steps before turning away as I walk out of his sight. I bounce up the stairs before pushing open the door and falling on my couch. The spring currently digging into my back did doing nothing to spoil my mood. That food was to die for. A luxury I will not soon forget. Not that I expect him to be buying me food all the time. He's no richer than I am. But still, it is a nice thing to do something other than mope around my apartment all day. On that note... I sit back up from my couch, taking in my surroundings. It's time for some spring cleaning. I spend the rest of the day tidying up the place, tossing out old pizza boxes and piles of bottles left scattered about, sweeping up all the cigarette butts I left everywhere, and cleaning off the counters after a whole day of work. It looks a lot more like home. A home with a bunch of holes in it, but not an eternally depressing shack of disappointment. I have a few spare quarters, so laundry is on the table as I stuff a bunch of clothes and my blanket and pillowcase into the rickety washing machine. After putting up my clothes and resting my bedding, or resetting my bedding, I plop back down on my couch. The blanket feels a whole lot comfier when it doesn't have crusty spots all over it. I fluff my flattened pillows best I can and deeply inhale the fresh scent of detergent floating up from the case. I check my phone. A single text from Anon letting me know he made it home safe. I quickly respond with a happy yay before setting it back down. He showed up. Not only showed up, but kept his word, and honestly, that's all I had hoped for. In fact, he still finds me beautiful even now. <sighs> Shut up, heart. I've got a lot more to do before jumping off the deep end into a relationship. We're making progress, but we have to be sure he's changed. I don't doubt it, really, but... I need to know that he is exactly the man I saw today. The best Anon he can be. With a smile on my beak, I cuddle up under the covers. My eyes heavy, but shining brighter today. Or tonight. With a heart full of dreams. End chapter four. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I do think that it's moving a little quickly for, like, the whole relationship talk. Um... I think it maybe would be better if, like, there was just more emphasis put on, like, just actually being friends and everything right now and then getting to, like, the whole relationship thing later. But, you know, it is what it is. Let's see. Let's catch up on chat real quick. $100 in the hole. And the potential 60 day wait, but I went with it. Twisted got the goddamn plushie. Twisted already headed out. But, uh... We'll have to keep tabs on that and see how the plushie uh, plays out. All oh, the texts aren't cute anymore. They can't be cute right out the gate. Just give it some time. And on wood break his ass. Yeah, it's not surprising. Spamton is greater than Jevil. Sorry, it's canon. Yeah, well, you can take your cannon and go fucking fly off a ship or something. Fuck that. <laughs> Love Jevil. Love that little guy. Love that little freak. Spamton, I, I throw him in the garbage can real quick. I have not fallen asleep yet, but I will at any moment keep reading. Yeah, we're not going to take a long uh, intermission on this one. I'm just going to refresh my voice real quick with a little bit of guagua. <sighs> 
and we're going to go ahead and roll into chapter five. And I think unless, um, unless I'm really feeling it, chapter five will probably be the last one for the night. Um, cause we'll probably be teetering on the four hour marker. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into chapter five, olive branches. <clears throat> A little over a month has passed since Alan and I started hanging out together again. True to his word, every work night he's sitting at a table watching me play. Though now he sits closer to the stage instead of hiding away in the back. A new vigor has found its way into my performances these days. Energy returning as I start eating normally again. My body has a ways to go, but it at least but at least it doesn't look like it's a s like a stiff breeze would knock my ass over. New feathers are filling out my wings. They still look like pale reflections of their former selves, but each new white plume shines in the light. I've started letting my hair grow a little, my stubble turning into short layer of freshly grown silver that covers my no longer bald head. My tail is beginning to swing to the beat of my songs again, and even the sad ones I wrote ages before have new life injected in them as I sway on stage. Everyone has taken notice of the changes in me. Dave no longer looks at me with concern every night I work uh, every night I come into work and my bandmates enjoy seeing me play with such energy a far cry from my normal depressed method of plucking away at my base each weekend Dan and I go somewhere new mostly for food but sometimes just a nice place to sit and have a chat he's looking better too no longer constantly wearing the depressing outfit he favored switching to a more casual look of a t-shirt and pants from time to time I can see the burn scars on his arms, but never question where they came from, nor the deep cr cuts across his forearms. We've both been through the shit, our four years apart. We don't need to explain every scar. After each day, he walks me home, saying goodbye with a hug that lasts a little longer each time. Life doesn't seem like such a drag anymore, like something forced on me that I have to deal with. Instead, I feel like my life is something I can be happy with. Even here in Skin Row. Waking up in my apartment is no longer shit either. I mean, the couch is still a piece of shit. Though, a little less now that I've found that fucking spring and ripped it out. I even yelled enough to get the landlord to replace my blinds. I think he was amazed to see one of his places not completely covered in trash and used needles. I had hung up some posters over the dents I had left in the wall, since I didn't need him seeing those until after I had already fucked off out of here. It's nice to have something to dream of again. Even if it's simply not living here until I die of old age or alcoholism. I rub the sleep from my eyes, yawning and stretching, ready to start a new day. That day being Friday morning, which means I should be getting a text, a call in about... My phone vibrates on the table, right on cue. I pick it up and check. Yep, it's my parents. The weekly call to make sure their daughter isn't six feet under, buried in concrete. I take a deep breath and answer the call, putting the phone up to my ear. Hey. Hello, dear. My mom's soft voice flows through the phone's aged speaker. She always sounds the same each time she calls. Tired, scared, worried, but with a small bit of hope. If my dad is ever nearby, he never lets it be known. Fairly certain he's fuming about me. He's fuming about me up and leaving. But back then I had nothing left to give. Just wanted to be gone. Hey mom. I'm still alive, as usual. I'm I'm very glad to hear that, dear. Usually this is where I let it end. Us saying a quick goodbye and then the phone call would follow the same routine. But not this time. Hey, mom. I say slowly as I carefully think about what to do here. I've been a ghost in their life for so long. Should I even do anything? No, I need to do something. She loves me even now. Yes, Lucy? The hopeful tone in her voice is almost enough to bring tears to my eyes. I think she's been waiting for a long time for me to say anything new. I'm... I'm, uh... A knot forms in my throat, choking my words as I struggle to get through this. I'm sorry. I can hear sniffles coming through the line. Soft, gentle cries as she takes it in. It's almost more than I can bear. 
thought I could go through life never caring about what they thought of me until the day I died. But something has changed. I started to give a damn. After a moment, she speaks. I know, honey. I've known since you left and you didn't mean to hurt us. Your spirit was broken. You believed you had nothing left to push for. I never thought less of you for it. I just... I wanted you to be happy. To be home. That's all it takes for the waterworks to start. Covering my eyes with my arm while trying to keep my composure. Even after four years of ignoring her every attempt to reach out to me. She still cares. Something I don't deserve after walking away. I'm just so fucking sorry I left you all behind. I sharply inhale as I push aside my sobs as best I can. I didn't know what to do. My whole life had fallen apart and I thought I just needed to get away from everyone and everything. But everything just got so much more fucked up. I... I... She cuts me off mid-sentence. You don't need to say anything, Lucy. I love you more than anything. You're still my little pirate princess, even after so long. Normally that would have pissed me off. But it does the exact opposite. Flooding my heart with warmth to have her speak of me with care, even after I abandon them. I can't do anything for a moment, overwhelmed by emotions as I sob into the phone. For her part, she keeps speaking comforting words as I break down outside her reach, and I know how much she just wants to hold me right now. Sniffling, I rub my eyes and calm down with a deep sigh. God, Mom. I'm sorry for being such a pain in the ass I've been. Fucking running away from home, not even telling you where I went, ignoring you every time you try to give a damn about me. I bet Dad still wants to throw me out a window. Don't apologize for being hurt, Lucy. I hoped... I knew one day you'd talk to us again. I only needed a way for you to come to the door. And your father doesn't want to hurt you. He misses you even if you can't say it. He's too proud to admit it. But he's done nothing but fret about you since you left. Each night he holds a picture of you, staring at it for ages, wondering where it all went wrong. I... I don't know what to say. The way he yelled at me when I left, I expected he'd cut all ties with me. I never knew he cared. <clears throat> he always has, dear. He may be gruff and stoic, but he loves you very much. He just doesn't know how to show it. Too many years of seeing the worst in life has left him burdened. His shell is thick, but you could always break through it. You're his little girl, his precious Lucy. He just wants you home. Words bring fresh tears to my eyes as I wipe them away with my blanket, gulping down another knot in my throat. I can't come home yet, Mom. I need more time. I don't want you to see me like this. Like what, Lucy? What happened? I'm a mess, Mom. As good as I've ever been, you'd be ashamed to see what I've done to my wings. I'm getting better, day by day. But I can't come back yet. I just need a little longer. Oh, Lucy. Take all the time you need, honey. We'll be waiting for you when you come home. And where do you live these days, anyway? You never did tell us where you were going. I hesitate for a moment. I don't want to tell her I'm living in this shithole with the rest of the vagrants of the city. But I don't want to lie to her anymore. I've been living in Skin Row for the past four years, Mom. I can hear the gasp and horror. It's the reaction I expected. Don't worry, I'm safe. The door's locked every night, and I never stay out past nine. Nobody messes with me here. Too poor for them to care, really. She composes herself as I hear a massive sigh pour through the speaker. I never thought that of all places you would end up there. But I'm still glad you're safe. Please, be careful. I want you to come home in one piece. I'll be safe, Mom. I've survived four years here, haven't I? I'm a lot tougher than most of the bastards who live around here. I've got stable employment and plenty of food to go around. No way in hell I'm telling her about my alcoholism and metric fuck ton of smokes I go through every week. I can hear the relief in her voice as she absorbs everything. Better than living on the streets, I suppose. Take care of yourself, Lucy. Come home to us. Whenever you like.
We love you. I love you too, Mom. I gotta go. I've got work in a little bit and I need to get ready. Okay, honey. I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mom. I set the phone down on the table and leaned back into the couch. It's sobering to think that after four years of barely existing to them, she's so open to just hearing me talk again. The fact that everything I've done hasn't dented her love for me even a bit brings a smile to my face. I guess I shouldn't have expected anything else. Mom never has shown anything but care for me, even when I fell apart in front of her. My dad, on the other hand, will probably still want to tear me a new one when he sees me again. Not a thing to even think about. Never planned to go home ever again, but here I am wondering if I might stop by. Probably when I don't look like a fucking skeleton with wings. On that note, I hop up off the couch and go to the fridge. As good a time as any to stuff my face with some pizza. Dave made this one special for me a bit ago. Cooked it at home and brought it into work. It reminded me of the pizza from Moe's. A pale reflection of his famous meteor pizza, but still good. Tastes way better than the standard fare I've come to expect. Not a bit of cardboard texture to be found. Only delicious cheese and meats. I say from my pile of gooey warm pizzas, my appetite has been growing every day, and I always want more. After snapping the last piece out of the air, I wash the plate and head to the bathroom. Shower time is a little longer these days now that I have some hair to wash, but I like it. Each day, I feel a little better. A little more like how I used to be. I can't afford fancy shampoo like at home, but it feels nice to have something to run my fingers through again. Even the crap water temp can't bring me down. Hard as it might try as it cuts out and I have to kick the pipe to start it back up. An easy day. Just another Friday night out of the pizzeria with my band and my bass. I look at my arms and sigh. Dad is going to kick my ass when he sees the tattoos. Finishing up my shower, I throw on my clothes. Maybe next paycheck, if I can keep myself from burning it all in cigarettes, I can buy something more than my drab all black apparel. It might be nice to have some variety instead of a blank tank top, and blank, uh, black, black, ta black top and black jeans all week long. I stare at the counter, looking at my eyeliner. Maybe I can add some color tonight. Grabbing my old orange and purple makeup, I go to work on my classic look from high school, way back when. I admired myself in the mirror as the color brings life to my normally sullen face, the bright shades bringing out the light in my eyes. Something that has been dark for so long. I smile at my reflection, starting to look a lot like myself again. I scoot out of the bedroom and snap up my base from the wall. I don't need to be late admiring myself. Kicking the door closed, I quickly lock up and run down the stairs. Not that it's going to be nighttime soon. But the guys want to practice a bit more before we go on, and I'm not going to let them down. Jogging down the street, I make record time as I quickly bounce through the door, planting a peck on the cheek of Dave as I slide by him. He smirks, shaking his head as he goes back to cooking. How's it going, guys? I speak with an uncharacteristic cheer as I put my case down, catching the two by surprise. Benji blinks at me a couple times, still unsure how to react of, to a version of me that isn't constantly moping. Uh, good thing. How about yourself? I smile at him, pulling the strap on my base over my shoulder. Yeah, doing pretty good, I guess. Better than usual, that's for fucking sure. Clicking on the amp, I strum a couple notes before nodding. Still sounds good. Jacob had been mid-bite when I barged in, nearly choking as he tried to swallow after the shock of the bubbly tarot had worn off. Wow, Fang, I don't think I've ever seen that color on you before. Isn't that new? New to you guys, but I used to wear this all the time back at home. I shrug. I just felt like changing up a bit. It looks great. Jacob smiles after finally clearing his airway of bits of veggie pizza. Thanks, Jacob, but... With a confident drag of my pick across the strings, I smile up at them. Let's get practicing then, guys. No one's ever going to notice us if we don't work our asses off. Both guys smile at that before getting their gear in order, and we practice for several hours in the back. The rumbling sounds of my bass nearly reach out to the restaurant as I hammer away at it. Though, as I play, I feel a longing, a small twinge of desire to hold my guitar again. 
Maybe later I'll talk to Benji about it. He's pretty good at bass as well, and I don't think he'd mind. For now, though, it's practice time. Dave sneaks in while we are jamming out and slides a few fresh pizzas on the counter, stopping us dead in our tracks as we scurry over to the table and devour it in seconds. As good as Dave's cooking is, that pizza would be bricks within moments if we ignored it. Going on stage no longer feels like a chore, with me just going through the motions to make it through another day. Instead, now I play like I have a full audience to impress, which isn't actually too far off these days. Each night, a few newcomers to the audience come in. I guess word of mouth spreads quickly in this part of town. Every new face makes me feel better about myself, a little more each day. Anon, for his part, sits as close as he can, cheering for me like I'm the best musician on the planet. Stars in his eyes raise my confidence to levels I never thought it could reach again. This is my moment. My time in the spotlight. Even here in the dark corners of Skin Row. And I'm gonna make it mine. As we finish the show, people actually pick up a CD or two as they head out. One guy snagging up a t-shirt with our logo. The logo being a portrait of myself back when my hair was long and flowing. With my face flanked on either side by Benji and Jacob. I feel like something for once. Even small time as I am, people are starting to love what I do. And I can't help but smile. Taking down the stage equipment is quick work with us piling up the sound gear in the back and locking it up. Jacob heads out the door and after a quick goodbye, after a quick goodbye, but I grab Benji's arm just before he can take off. He looks back at me with a quizzical look as I hold him in place. Uh, what's up, Fang? I let his arm go, twisting the strap on my case nervously. Hey, Benji, I wanted to ask you something. Uh, what is it? He turns around to face me, looking me square in the eyes. I... Wanted to know if you'd be okay with me playing my guitar a little bit here and there? If it wouldn't bug you. He shakes his head. Wouldn't bother me at all, Fang. You know I've been asking you about it. Just let me know when you want to try so I can bring my bass down instead. Be fucking weird for us both to play guitar with no one on bass. No worse than trying to play two bass. Thoughts of my old band drift in my head. Why in the world would anyone do that? Dumbass marketing plans. But anyway, thanks, Benji. I appreciate it. I'll let you know when I plan to give it a go. I'll see you next week. Yeah, sure thing, Fang. See ya. He waves before taking off down the street. I sigh as I get ready to head home, and then I hear a voice pop up from around the corner. Hey, Fang. Mind an escort home? And I'll call out as he comes into view. <laughs> Not at all, dweeb. Let's get going. It's fucking cold. Start to shiver. Winter was growing closer day by day, and the drafty alleyways of this place suck even more now than during the baking summer heat. Of course. Come on. He waits until I catch up with him, and we set off to my home. The chill is cutting into me, into me to the bone. A thin layer of feathers and scales is no match for a cold autumn breeze, but a good jacket has always been outside my budget. I gasp as I feel an arm reach around my side, as Anon pulls me in close. He radiates warmth from that sweater of his. Sighing, a soft smile curls on my lips as I put an arm around his waist. My own portable furnace. And the rest of the walk is slow but snug, the woolen fibers of his sweater warming me up the whole rest of the walk. The stars are already out and shining bright, the full moon illuminating the normally drab streets in a cozy ethereal light. Not mind if this walk took an hour. Feels so right. As we reach the front of my apartment, we part and look at each other for a moment. Neither one of us knows exactly what to say right now. A minute passes before I finally act for the both of us. I walk up to him, taking one of his hands in mine as I gaze into his eyes. I can see the nervousness in them. Don't think he knows what to do, but I do. And on... I speak softly, capturing his full attention. I know I said it'd take a while, and I honestly thought it would, but... I draw him closer to me. I draw closer to him, mere inches separating us. Anon, I haven't been this happy since everything went to shit. This month I've hung out with you has been the best time I've had in years. <laughs> you can say I'm going too fast, but... I cup his cheek in my palms. I slowly raise my beak up to him. 
I'd say life is too short for anything but this. With that, I pull his head down to me, planting a kiss on his lips, which melts into mine. All the hurt slowly eases away in this moment. He has apologized. He has spent this past month showing me exactly how much he's changed. And the real him has come through. The unknown I loved back then, and the unknown I love now. He puts his hands gently on either side of my head, cradling it as we share a moment I thought we'd never have again. The chilling breeze, not, uh, not affecting me in the slightest as our passion reignites. My hearts have been burning for this the moment, for this moment for longer than we can remember. My still tattered wings wrap around him, bringing him as close to me as I can. The moment fades into infinity as every last speck of my being pours into that one kiss. As we pull back from each other, we rest our foreheads against one another's. I've let too much of my life go down the toilet. I can't let any more of it die the same way. I start to chuckle, a small fit of laughter growing into a happy chorus as we stand there laughing in each other's arms. Tears of joy and healing flow freely from us both as two wayward souls reconnect. I slowly pull my wings back behind me as I step away a little and look up at his tear-stained face with a smile as he speaks. So, does this mean... It means we're together again, dweeb. I chuckle as I watch his face turn red. Shit, Fang. Uh, don't think I'll ever be able to top that if I tried. You'll have plenty of chances to try. He rubs the back of his head with a cough. <clears throat> uh, well, I guess I'd better get practicing. He leans over, kissing me on the cheek and smirking. One step at a time. No, hell no, you don't. I grab his head and pull him back down onto my lips, kissing him forcefully, knocking the breath out of his lungs before letting him go. You see? That's how you kiss. He stumbles back, taking a deep breath to regain his composure. Holy shit, Fang. <laughs> Let me breathe a little bit. Hmm. Maybe. I grin mischievously at him as he stands up straight. He sticks his hands in his pockets as he sighs. Well, I'd better get home. You know better than I do, it isn't safe to wander around at night. I do, but... I grab his hand, tugging him back over to me. I don't want you to go home tonight. Will you stay with me? I'm tired of being all alone. I'm tired of being alone all the time. It sucks in that apartment with nothing but my thoughts. He chokes on his words for a minute, trying to stumble out a sentence through the disaster of an emotional outburst he's trying to contain. Uh, oh, uh, sure, fuck. I mean, god damn it. Yeah, if you want me to, Fang. Do you want to, Hanon? I tilt my head as I look up at him. He blushes a bit before nodding. I do. I really do. Then come on. I've got some movies we can watch before we go to sleep. I lead him up the stairs to my apartment. It isn't much, but it is comfier without all the trash and shit around. Looking a little frightened and out of place, he glances around the room as I put up my base away before sitting on the couch, patting the spot beside me. He looks like he's on a date with his first girlfriend ever, which I suppose I am yet again. Come on, dweeb, I don't bite. You know that. Well, unless you piss me off, but you wouldn't make that mistake twice, would you? He shakes his head before plopping down next to me. Hell fucking no. I ain't making that dumbass mistake again. So, what have we got to watch? I've got kung fu movies here we can watch. Nothing special, just what I could bring from home. Oh, hell yeah. I haven't seen a fighting movie in ages. He bounces in place in excitement. And I can't help but laugh at the dweeb. We cuddle on the couch enjoying a couple of movies. Anon looking like a kid in a man's body. I suppose he always has been that way. Grown up. But every bit of his energy was still back in high school living out his dorky dreams. Not that I mind one bit. In fact, I loved... I loved that about him. Never one to be super formal and boring as fuck. Just a guy trying to live his best life. As the hours go by... He falls asleep during the last movie. I don't have the heart to move him, nor do I want to. Instead, I pull the blanket around us, settling one of my wings across his shoulder. I smile down at the dweeb. My dweeb. We've been through hell, but 
At least now we have each other. And that is the end of chapter five. Who are these people in our band? Um, they're just, uh, I, they're, I'm assuming they're just original characters for the story. I don't think they have um, any uh, previous bearing on like uh, Snoot Game or GVH. I could be wrong about that though. The way I interpret it is just like they had to have characters for the band to play with Fang. So might as well just come up with it. Same with uh, Dave, I think. My man, and all. If you decide to do a reading of None in the Chamber, it's an emotional ride, and you'll like Rosa more than you already do. It's constant. They can't possibly make me like her more. All right, all right. That sounds pretty interesting. But yeah, uh, like I said, I don't want to go like super long, like much longer than four hours tonight. Four hours is probably a good place to call it. Um, so we got, what, like <laughs> a little over a quarter through. Damn. That, that long hour, like, long tangent really did derail it, huh? <laughs> Again, though, wouldn't, wouldn't really do it different. It was, it was fun to chat with chat and uh, get through reading. I'd call the quality of it, like, 6.5 out of 10, maybe 7. Uh, which one? None in the Chamber or Broken Wings? Uh, let's see here. Apparently Trish, my Trish, Stella, Nazar, Ripley. Okay, this one. Yeah, um, I, I, I kind of feel like for, and maybe this is just, maybe this is just me, but I feel like for an E two fanfic or an E one fanfic, you're going, you'd want to be stepping more into the rebuilding of the characters after everything that happens like we're, we're a quarter in and they're already back in um back into a relationship um i mean obviously you can take it many ways with this and you know improvement and all that but i feel like for a fanfic that's supposed to focus on e1 or e2 that should be the end goal getting to that destination of being able to reconcile and be with one each one another again and then having like a little bit of extra at the end just just to make you smile but that's just my own personal preferences um it's it's written fine enough i uh, you know just a little bit the, the pacing's a little too quick person for my personal tastes but yeah i enjoyed reading it it was fun overall great but some parts are not good good middle of the road fic this is weird this is weird. Snoot is the only game to get me to read fix. Guess that shows the quality of the game. Yeah, I, I think a, I think a good show of how good a game's story is is measured by how incentivized you are to seek extra content for it, right? Like, a, a really well done story is going to make you want to think about what happens to these characters after the story ends, right? Where does the world go? What What sorts of things continue to happen? And fanfics and like other fan creations are a good way of exploring that. And you can really see when like a, a fandom enjoys a story because there will be a lot of fan creation for it. Like they will be reading this later. Yeah, by all means. Uh, like I said, I think um, I think the fic should be linked in the description. If not, I'll make sure to post that into it later. Um, but yeah. For a first stream, for a first fanfic reading stream, I'd say this went pretty well. Uh, one thing I want to ask for the people that are here, would you, because obviously I'm going to leave the, the VOD up as is, right? But would you want a cut down version? Because we obviously made it so that there was clear demarcations in the story or while we were reading for when we're just chatting for a little bit and when we're actually reading the chapters like there's there's clear cuts there would you prefer just having it like in the previous streams with all the reading stuff where i just dropped the, the titles and everything uh using the chapter markers for the vod or on top of that would you rather me go back cut it up so that the chapters are just being read one after the other the world building 
isn't anything extra and the mother bit was not well written but it is a fanfic can't rate it as a book yeah i mean it's 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 additional right it's it's the reader's interpretation of how something would happen we, even though we might not necessarily agree with it we have to look at it in the context of the world that they're setting up right yeah i, I feel like uh, the amount of time that's passed is kind of underplayed a little bit um four years a lot shit can happen you're I mean, even in a fucking year, you can lose, like, relationships with, like, your family and everything if things go to shit. So, I, I mean, yeah, it, it, I would have played it differently, but I, I'm not necessarily saying it's terrible or anything. Um, Just put some chapters in the VOD. Just put the markers so a person can skip by them. I need to get it. Okay, got it. Yep, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to do that. That's easy enough for me that I don't have to, like, hop into, like, a... Uh, fucking video editor or anything and then put up like a duplicate vo or like a video for it so that'll work fine that's what we'll do for the uh, streams going forward for now then um in terms of how often we're gonna do these things i can't say for certain i think for right now it'll just be i'll, I'll look at monday being like the type of day that we would maybe look more at doing reading streams um but i'm not gonna say that it's impossible for us to do them uh, other times during the week i'll just have to play it by ear because um it should be pretty obvious at this point that i like to keep variety on the channel it should be something that i kind of just feel like doing in a day and so be it like i have a friend on and i'm like oh i'll just fire up stream and we'll shoot the shit on stream and that'll be fun or if i want to read something like we did today i'll keep it like nice and loose um but we'll, we'll look at making monday more of like a concrete we're gonna try and keep this to be like some type of reading type day if if i can no promises. Like I said, we'll see how things play out. A good thing about Snoot and Wani is that there's a lot of untold moments in the middle that allow for people to make fanfics and mods. Yeah, there's there's definitely like different like different moments where they do time skips where someone can come in and put something in, right? Like that happened with um with uh fishing uh, the fishing trip mod. And that mod's great. I love that mod. Um and technically Culture Night does the same. So yeah, th there's a lot of room to like elaborate on certain aspects and because not all of uh, the relationships between people are explicitly told or like laid out f as plain, you can do something like with Fishing Trip where you can kind of fill in the gaps between like someone like um, Ripley and Anon and how exactly Ripley goes from being hostile to Anon to, you know, being more amicable. Snoot for the Snoot God. Gators for the Gator Throne. I want to lay on the Gator Throne. I want the Gator Throne to vibrate. I like this. Tune in for more readings. You know, then I'll try and do them in the future. And the thing is, too, when when we when I say we're going to be doing reading streams, I'm I'm obviously starting off with like Snoot Game, and uh, like you know those types of fanfics. But that's not the only types of reading that I would plan on doing. Um, I, I definitely have the door open for trying to explore other things. Like I mentioned earlier, maybe taking a look at like just reading some SCP entries because that's pretty easy on the, pretty easy to read and like just talk about afterwards. Um, it isn't as much of a commitment, right? Like, like I, like we said earlier, this is 19 chapters and we only got like a little over a quarter of the way. So an SCP type reading stream that can go, that can be an easy one off where we just read a couple of articles, discuss them and just overall have a good time. Susan mods, we know fishing trip is before Moe's job. Or I mean mods, we can fit in the timeline of Snoot. Next time you're on Helldivers, I can join if you need an extra. And we'll see. I I, pr I probably could open up Helldivers to let chat join in on that. I think that's not too hard. That, and plus, the Helldivers goes way easier when you have more people. I mean, I got to level 50 basically doing solo, but then I started to do, like, online quick play shit, and I'm like, holy hell. <laughs> holy hell. Having another person watching your back sometimes can really fucking change things. The bowling bonus chapters left the door open for the fishing trip. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in, and in terms of, like, how much can we fit between the timelines, uh, I mean, we don't, we don't have to only look at... Um, only look at that right like those time frames during the high school we can also i mean it's fan fiction right you can twist things a little bit change events a little and do something a bit differently and that's perfectly fine too I again i think the big thing with fan fictions is you just need to be cognizant cognizant of the source material and 
make decisions based off the characters that make sense, right? Because the one thing that brings a lot of people out of like reading a fan fiction, like a good fan fiction, is if the character is doing something that's not in character without good explanation, right? That's one thing that'll take people out of it. So as long as you're being, as long as you're aware of that and you try to play to that, usually you can make most types of fan fictions work. Chris, you need to help Super Earth so that Principal Spears can big shot the meteor. God, imagine fucking Principal Spears hell diving. Be tearing terminids in half. And I'm gonna get his shit rocked by Ripley in the fic. But that's just a theory, a uh, game theory. You can't say that anymore. He left us. Do they blame Anon for that or what? I think it will do good with reading streams. You have a voice that doesn't grate on ears. And you can do more than one voice. That's already putting you above like 80% of other streamers. I mean, I've said it before. I feel like my voice is like the one thing I got going for me. Like there's, there's streamers who are just inherently funny as shit. I'm not one of those guys. I kind of need like something to bounce off of to really get some nice uh, zingers in there. But when it comes to like just speaking... I, th I think I do that relatively well, so I try to make sure that I at least have that be a bit of a shining part of the streams. I you know, love all the voices do really brings it to life. Yeah, I mean, like when we started doing like I want it, I could tell it was gonna not be as entertaining, even for me as well. Like as the streamer, if like you if you just do the same voice the entire time, not to like rip on anyone who does, but I just, if I'm going to be sitting there for, like we did in Wani, 25 hours, it might as well make it a little bit more, make it pop, you know? So take these broken wings and learn to fly again. Learn to live so free. And when we hear the voices sing the book of love, we'll open up and let us in. Yeah, yeah. Find a snoot theory. Still funny that this is a fanfic about a game that is an anti-fan game to a government-funded game, but layers. It's always funny to draw that line sometimes. Just figure out the trail. Trace it back. You never know what will be become of stuff, right? Art begets art. May not be the, uh, inherently funny, but you are not cringe. A lot of streamers are cringe. You got it. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I mean, what can you do? Some people, it, I don't know. I'm not going to, like, try and, like, belittle anybody. You know, everybody's got their marketability to some extent when it comes to streaming. They just need to figure out what their niche is and kind of harp on that. You know, try to keep the positive vibes. When I played Snoot, I did voices and stuff, made it way more fun to play. Exactly. It, it, it just, it adds to the life of the game. And with a well-written game like uh, Snoot and Wani... Adding life to it makes it all that more enjoyable. But, uh, yeah. We got a nice little 4-hour, four, 15-minute four stream there. I'm happy with that. And uh, from what it seems like, everybody else was pretty happy with how the stream played out. So, we'll be doing this more than likely again. Um, we'll... I'll tentatively say we'll do another one of these on Monday. But... If I'm feeling it, maybe we do another reading stream earlier than that. I'll have to see how I'm feeling with games. Uh, <laughs> someone did mention Dragon's Dogma 2 uh, releasing later this week. And honestly, I would like to check that out. But I'm still kind of determining if that's something I'd actually want to even do on stream. Um, just because, I mean, everybody and their fucking mother is going to be doing Dragon's Dogma 2 on stream. That's like jumping into the fucking ocean and hoping that someone throws you a life jacket. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how everything plays out this week. But yeah, not Jerma, but not everybody needs to be like him. Exactly. The thing about Jerma is that he's he's unique. If everybody if everybody was Jerma, he wouldn't be unique, right? So you need you need all types of flavors to make things work, right? And I'm fine with the flavor I am. I'm not gonna like sit here and try and be something I'm not. So. The voice I did for Fang, though, I thought wasn't happy, but it was worth it. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's that's the one thing you learn when you when you do voices for a long time uh, is that you need to be careful when you're putting a voice onto a character because you got to be like, okay, how often am I gonna see this character? Because <laughs> with uh, like when Jeremy and I were doing uh, Iwani and he gave like fucking Vinny that tone voice, I'm like, dude, 
<laughs> Dude, you better hope this kid does not show up more than a couple of times or else you're fucking done. <laughs> uh, but yeah. All right. We're going to wrap it up. Everybody who's in chat, be lurking otherwise. I hope you had a good time chilling around here. Uh, we won't be streaming again tomorrow. As always, Tuesdays are my dedicated day off every week. Uh, but we should be back on Wednesday. I'll uh, try and keep uh, the the what, what what's what's the, the pattern the 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 trend. I'll keep trying to set it so that the YouTube, if I'm doing a stream that day, all of the YouTube stream will be um, set scheduled for when the stream's gonna go live. Just so that way it's a little easier to figure out. Um, otherwise, I'll probably post a uh, community update saying that I'm not streaming and when I'll be streaming again. So. Wednesday is when you can look forward to probably seeing me again. I've been following other streamers with Wani, like Sai. Me and the chat are pushing her on ending four since she's only playing once. Nah, nah. Push, push to ending three. <laughs> Get that bittersweet ending. We love tears here. Time to rewind stream and watch the beginning I missed. I hope you enjoy it. It's a... Uh, Definitely doesn't have as much talking as we did in the fucking middle of this one, so. But yeah, everybody, have a good rest of your day, night, evening, whatever time it is for you. And I'll hopefully catch you on Wednesday. Until then, be good, y'all. And, uh, you know, love our, love our little tarot GF. Okay, bye.